Hey, what's up? Welcome to Final Encounter Cast. Glad to have you along. Twitch.tv slash Limit Break Radio starting at 1 p.m. Join us each and every single Sunday, even if we have no studio, which is the case this week. And yet we are still live. We are still here with you. 1 p.m. Twitch.tv slash Limit Break Radio. My name's Nate. Glad to have you along. Um, we are, of course, doing the show differently today. It's going to look and sound a whole lot different from normal. By different, we mean shittier. Um, and, uh, <sighs> wow. Oh, wow. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. So basically, the way that we're having to engineer the show today is as if I wasn't here. Mostly because, um, you know, we've it, it was it was kind of a joke for a few weeks um, and then it got fixed uh, to the tune of one hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, but I, I've been having electrical problems in my uh, in the studio space uh, now for God damn. I mean, it seems like almost two months that I've been dealing with this, if not longer. And uh, as I as I had said, I had uh, paid an electrician to come out, um, fix some uh, some breaker problems which were apparently causing uh voltage dips and and light flickering in the studio um that was fixed for i don't know like four or five weeks and then uh just after last sunday's show uh on monday when i started putting you know the podcasts and stuff together um, the flickering started again and it has gotten progressively worse and worse over the last couple of days. So uh, I've had to, you know, of course, schedule another appointment with the electrician. Uh, he's going to come out uh, hopefully before Wednesday uh, when we have to record Checkpoint Radio. Um, and we're going to have to replace the entire power panel, um, <laughs> which is, yeah, not a great situation. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's expen it's like, it's expensive. It is uh, frustrating. Um, it is uh, personally dismaying for me. Um, you know, I hate not feeling like I can work properly. I mean, I guess there's, you know, there's kind of two ways to look at this. Um, and, and, you know, the first way is that, you know, it's a challenge. And for things like Checkpoint Radio, um, you know, for this week's uh, round of shows, you know, this is definitely going to be a challenge. Um, but it's one that we were able to rise to meet on Checkpoint Radio. And actually, I think, you know, we this this week we put together one of our uh, best episodes that we've done so far, um, which, by the way, you can check that out right here at twitch.tv slash Limit Break Radio tonight at about seven o'clock. We will maintain our same schedule today of final encounter cast and then limit break radio and then the full episode of checkpoint radio um so again that starts at seven here at uh, twitch.tv slash limit break radio so the fact that we were able to you know persevere and actually make you know one of our better shows is something that i'm pretty proud of at the same time every time this happens it creates an, a, a, an extreme amount of anxiety um and and a, a whole lot of a whole lot of stress well, it's just a it, huge pain in the ass it is it, it's a huge pain in the ass um you know and and i hate having to do any of our shows you know kind of stripped down like this you know this is not this is not the ideal way to do a show um you know even even if we don't have necessarily any strict quality standards outside the ones that we put on ourselves but it's still you know, like I take it, I take it sort of like as a personal failure. Well, yeah, um, because we feel like we're just any other old podcast right now. Right. It's well, gross. you know, our crowd loves our low budget shows. They think it's endearing. <laughs> it's gross. It's, um, it's not great, but we get like, we do appreciate all your patience with us having to do it this way. Right. The, the good news is that we get to have fan fictions a lot and mm. erotic shows during the sketchy ones. That, that's true. It is a the no pants Sunday. Ones. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 whenever stuff like this happens, I take it, um, you know, pretty personally and I, and I, you know, I, I just, I do want to apologize to our long-term listeners. 
um, that, you know, uh, these couple of shows this week with Limit Break Radio um, are not going to be up to the normal quality standards. Uh, it's we're, all bad. We're, try- we're, we're trying really, really, <laughs> nice. really hard uh, to, you know, be able to try to get this fixed as quickly as possible. Um, but, you know, it, a show like this, you know, it, it doesn't doesn't matter how low budget you do it. it you need power. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's the one thing that it's like, you know, we could do this easily without internet. We could do this very easily, you know, uh, in, without in a juxta in a whole. Yeah. Like in a variety of like different, like host configurations, we've proved that time and time again, but like, it's sort of the one thing that we absolutely need is power and like stable power. And it just, it kills me because like, it makes it, it I'm, I'm worried not just about the show. Like, I, I mean, I, I know that our fans are, are very patient with shit like this and, and I, you know, that's, that's definitely awesome. But at the same time though, um, you know, it makes me worry about uh, my hardware and my electronics and, you know, cause like you have an unstable, power source it can fuck up all of that really really quickly yep. and it's also really frustrating because the only place that i have had stable power is back in my bedroom so anytime i'm spending at home i'm spending back in my bedroom because it's switch your bedroom in the studio yeah right <laughs> well next time we're just gonna not put the studio in a building constructed in 1820 <laughs> well i mean you know it's and and you don't expect like when you move into a place like this that you would have this kind of fucking problem and uh and it's just it's ah oh god i, I it it bothers me, man. I haven't been sleeping like last couple of days. I have not since this started. I have not been sleeping very well. Oh. Um, I I just it's it it stresses me out. It's it, it it's like when my fucking computer would blow. You know what I mean? Like it stresses me out on that kind of level. And um, it's it's not here's something, something for, for the studio, studio hashtag hashtag studio, studio fund. fund. Well, we just got some money for the studio fund. That's nice. Woo. Thank you for that. We really appreciate the donation. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's really a bummer. And, you know, we have enough tech problems as a company without you having power problems that might cause more of them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and that's the thing that just kind of drives me up the fucking wall is that, you know, like out of all the fucking problems to have, you know what I mean? Like power. Yeah. This is not the one that you really you know kind of like expect and and i mean like yeah i've got all of the battery backups and like I, i've put as as many you know solutions in the way of the problem as i possibly can but i mean like dude this is going to be 600 700 bucks out of my pocket like they have to come in and and you know like not just take out the old box but they've got to make room for the new box because they don't make boxes that size anymore like it's just the whole thing is is really really frustrating and the fact that the i couldn't get the electrician to call me back for two days like that wasn't cool like it's just man i can't believe the building does not cover like a power failure to that extent well it's but the thing is is that it's it's not the building that's having the problem it's not an unstable you know source from the building the problem is with the box and you know it's your uh, condo in particular it's yes, it's my unit in particular. And while the ele- while this electrician does work, um, you know, other places in the building uh, and has said that he's had to replace more than a few of them, it's not enough to, you know, be able to go to either the insurance company or the, um, you know, the the um, company here. The uh, I don't know what you would even call it the building manager right, and try yeah. you know trying to get them to be responsible for it the like, landlord effectively yeah well i mean not a landlord since you know it's it's you know we own right. the the unit so i feel like the building landlord. should be responsible for that though because like if your electricity causes a fire then you know they're gonna be responsible for the whole building so if you don't That's do true. anything it's like you're holding the building ransom it's like well you don't pay for this <laughs> I'm just gonna keep living, and maybe the building will burn down. I well, don't know. I I think I think what my main concern is is that you know 
if you've had to replace other boxes and mine is having such a problem, like how many other problematic breakers are there that are sitting in old power boxes that are arcing with people that don't have the ability to pay to fix it? You know what but, I mean? Like does that this really surprise you coming from the building that's left two of its uh, elevators inoperable for as long as I can remember. I mean, look, I, you know, elevators are expensive, man. They they are. And they haven't like they've replaced the entire guts of both of those elevators and paying for it has been the issue because it is it is sort of like Hope a things uh, get things better, get for, better you for you, Nate. Oh, oh, thank shit. you, Ryoku. Thanks, thank Ryoku. Thank he's you, got Ryoku. the Twitch or the like, stream alert prime stuff because he's got the little floating like emoticons on that. Yeah, that's, that's cute. That's cool. Shit. <laughs> damn dude <laughs> anyway um yeah but i mean like it's yeah it's just it's 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 immensely frustrating yeah yeah so i mean i'm not I, i'm not totally you know i know what i gotta do you know but i'm just like i'm not totally sure what the timetable for everything is right now until he actually gets here and and looks at it i mean ostensibly because he's replacing the thing he you know and he thinks he can do it in a day you know well i mean that's great if he can do it in a day but i mean that does i don't know if he, if he has to like hollow out room for a larger box that seems like a big task yeah it it does but i mean i don't know we'll see we'll see what ends up happening but i told you know i told him i was like look man i've got to have this done before wednesday and he was like all right we can we can do that so all right well if he can do yeah. it yeah it's just it's it's i i don't know man it, it's it's such a bummer and it's such a stress and uh you know like i just not much not but much, i hope but that i hope that, that hashtag, hashtag charity. charity thanks <laughs> that's nice of you um you know dude it's it's it, it's it's just it's one of those things where like it's inevitable and i mean at some point you know like i at some point i think i was driving home on friday and i was really beating myself up for it um and and i was just like dude you have no control over this there's like like this is like one of the few things where you can really objectively look at it and it's like dude i mean other than putting too much load on the circuit maybe like there is no way that I could even be responsible for this. So there's nothing, you know, there's nothing that I could have done personally to get out in front of it or try to rectify the problem. So it's like, it's just know? kind of, it's one of those things. It is what it is. Like everyone faces growing problems. Ours is just happening to be kind of awkward. Yeah. I mean, then this is, you know, this is just kind of like what you, what you deal with, um, you know, when you're trying to, run Save your own world hard. well no when you're trying run to run hardware. your own hardware and um when you're you know like because i've got to engineer all this shit right like at a radio station at my day job something goes wrong with a piece of hardware there's a team of four engineers that come running in and figure out like a way to work around the problem and a way to fix it right like there is a some, Some more, more money, money for, for this studio, studio tech fund. fund. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you, Vivi. Um, but you know, it's it, it's uh, it, there's there's like a it, there's less responsibility at at a place like a radio station or like a, a you know a place that is is you know this is like their entire this is what their entire staff is for right yeah. like we've got five people and i mean like not only am i responsible for you know the post production but it's like all of the pre production and all of the hardware engineering is like i've got to figure out all of that like there's no one that i can call and be like hey my power is fucked up and i need you to solve this problem for me and i need it to be done tomorrow like there's just there's nothing to do for that you know what i mean so, you know, it, it I, I, but this is what you sign up for. Like, this is honestly like, this is sort of what the run the whole run extension cords. I've been doing that. I've had to actually been keeping, I've been keeping the circuit off and I've been running extension cords to be able to run um, my modem and my router. So I've already been doing that, but I'm not going to run the entire studio, you know, three fucking PCs off an extension cord. Like, that's just, that's even more of a fire hazard. And I could end up fucking up the circuit in my 
uh, in my, you know, the only one circuit that's working in the entire <laughs> and the Sounds entire fun. thing. No, yeah. I don't want to do that. No, I don't. I'm try like, it. Okay, no, but it, live life on the edge, hard mode. If it blows Are you a real up, gamer. If it blows up and there's a fire, then you get all new stuff because of insurance. <laughs> you have insurance, right? If he dies, then we have to do the show by ourselves every week. Well, don't die, obviously. He just wants him to lose all of his shit, but not die. Yeah, and oh. then you get all new shit. I don't oh. want. I don't need all new shit. <laughs> I, 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 well, I you like, get more money too. I like the shit that I have. Um, do you? Uh, yeah, I do. You, you've got like an Xbox in there. Do you like that? <laughs> you don't, do you? It's just, it's just there because it hasn't died yet. In fact, it actually <laughs> probably has died. It's been that long since I've tried to turn it on. Speaking of Xboxes and not dying, I was going through my basement looking for Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and <laughs> a apparently why would you say that sentence out loud apparently i still have uh remember argetlam i still have his xbox 360 from when he went to japan nice you're a terrible person for not giving that back to him i forgot and clearly he forgot too it's still in the box now it's out there yeah so yeah i'm sure he's a regular listener so you got 30 days otherwise it becomes mine and then i'm gonna (laughs) pawn it for why don't you just send him a know. message? You gave him, know, like multiple, you gave him like multiple years. Now you're going to give him 30 days? Yeah. It's uh, it's that thing where like eminent domain, where after like seven years, it becomes yours because you've been planting crops on it for seven years. <laughs> I don't you, think that's I, what eminent domain is. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Have you played it? Have you played Lost Odyssey? No, no he has not. You should take that 360, plug it in. You can borrow my copy of Lost Odyssey. You should fucking play it before you get rid of it. Is it a good game? It's a great game. It's probably it, it's probably one of my favorite games, like top ten all time. It, it should have been a Final oh, Fantasy. God. It honestly should have. Yeah. It should. It that you're, you're not been... selling me on this because your it's taste Firefly esque. Okay. <laughs> It, should- I don't know. It, it was done by Mist Walker, which was all the like legacy Final Fantasy dudes who were like, "Hey, let's make our own studio." Oh, is that that? No, that's Blue Dragon game. That, I- no, it's same team behind Blue Dragon, but this one. I hated that game. Yes, Blue Dragon was not a good game. This oh, okay. is a Final Fan. This is essentially a Final Fantasy game. Yeah, for real. Is it like a Final Fantasy six or a Final Fantasy fifteen? It's not it's, Final Fantasy fifteen. It's like, um. Well, both of them are good, so I win either way. No, 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 no. It's yeah, not. It's, don't talk. We're trying to convince him. Yeah, it's not like it's not like six, and it's definitely nothing like fifteen. It's more like trying to think of what what the character progression system is like. I want to say it's a little bit more like seven with the materia, because hmm. it's got like a materia ish system. I think. Yeah, I don't remember the progression system at all. But it's, yeah, I, I just remember like the flashback story things. God damn is the story good and is the great. graphics good? Yes, both Do the of graphics those still things, yes. hold up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, three sixty is not that outdated. So. Yeah, dude, for sure. If you're Come playing, on. if you're playing it, if you're playing it on an HDMI cable, you're fine. It'll at least be seven twenty, and it's a good looking game. Okay, you sold me. He's gonna do it. Actually, I think it plays like if I remember, it plays a little bit like a mixture of like that whole there's like a a whole era of RPGs like Legend of Dragoon and Chrono Cross. I was Cross. just about to say Legend of Dragoon. Yeah. And, and, like they all came out around the same time and while they're not like exactly the same, I tend to lump them all together in my head mm-hmm. and it just seemed like that what but with better graphics and i, okay, and I just I, fucking I, loved it i like how everyone in the chat's like just play it on xbox one it's backwards compatible you know the xbox one that you have chris yeah yeah go yeah. get that xbox one that you have no plug in 360 that you don't have to pay for <laughs> and borrow my copy you spend zero dollars and you get like a really great rpg experience is it turn-based or a real time? yes yes it's legit oh, it's- dude it it's legit. Okay, it's, well, see, I have a problem because I don't want to play any turn-based games on a console anymore. This is 2017. You shut the fuck up. I, you, you can't even finish that sentence because I know you're not serious. I know so he's I, just quoting I, me. I, I get this. How about the news, guys? Anyway, news? listen, Um, so that's why we're doing the show on <laughs> Shitty Setup today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we were talking about? Oh, yes, yeah. it, it said, is. That was the podcast equivalent of Albuquerque. Thank you for that. Um, but From Weird Al? Yeah. 
Oh, I love that. Remember, that whole song was just a roundabout way of saying that he doesn't like sauerkraut. Yeah, that's true. I remember that one time when his mom tied him up to a tree and forced fed oh him sa- nothing but sauerkraut until he was 26 and a half years old. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> anyway. It's, cl- it's clearly a no-pants Sunday. <laughs> um. So, yeah, that's my life right now. Um, and I, pre- I, I do appreciate, uh, you know, the donations and, and everyone trying to help. Um, but you know, it's, it's a problem that we got to get, uh, solved right, right now, like right away. So, uh, hopefully by next week we will be all set, um, and, and back to normal, normal strength. Um, but you know, are we until- ever normal though? Well, we're, we're our normal. Yeah, normal for us. We're consistent. How about that? Back to precise. Anyway, <laughs> let's check out what's going on in the news. Alrighty, guys. Super Mario 64 can now be played with up to 24 players online. A ROM online has been manipulated to allow up to 24 people to connect and play together, either in a battle royale or speed running. Granted, the ROM is probably going to be C and D, and probably already is, but it's uh, you know, it's awesome. It's a neat, neat idea. Just wish they would done it with a better game. I mean, what? I've what better a... game is than you do it with Super Mario 64? 64 is like the best game. It's a wonderful game, but I'd rather them do it with a game that will actually still be here in a few weeks. Yeah, that that's the problem. Anytime anybody does anything with Nintendo stuff, you know it's going to vanish within the week. Chris, how many times did you say you would play Fallout if like you could like co-op, you know, play it with somebody? Like twice. So why haven't they made a mod for Fallout that does this? Because that's harder than doing a Super Mario 64 mod. I mean, that's probably fair, I guess. <laughs> and Super Mario 64 is probably a better game than Fallout 4. Uh, Super Mario 64 is a great game. I'm just saying any amount of work that you put into it is going to go the way. I'm just trying to figure out how work. that game lends itself to like super co-op mode. It doesn't at battle all. Battle Royale mode. No, Why it's do you like battle speed royale running? in 64. We gotta like play this game together, guys. This is the this is like the best game ever to play. I'm with. surprised that you haven't already Jesus. tried to rope us into doing this with you. Seriously, I've had like 12 people this week be like, dude, you need to download this. And I'm like, I'm so not doing that. They've like, got no. like a YouTube tutorial for how to install it and get it to run. It's crazy. I don't I don't think I want to do that. Like I like Super Mario 64. I just don't know that I want to go through that to play it on my computer like are you going to get an N64 USB controller <laughs> that's dude that's see that's the that's the that's thing. equipment fund well they also have it on the was it we the have to stream it yes or something we have to stream it yeah. and then we can buy, send everyone USB 64 controllers because it's for the stream and then it's going to have high jinx and hilarity and people will love it and I'll love it yeah, well, and that, 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 that is true. That would happen. But after it gets C and D, we're not playing it anymore. Then we will never use those USB sixty four controllers ever again. Yeah. Why would you not? The, the, For when the N sixty four classic comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Nostalgia. And and none of us get a copy of it. Or okay, fine. For the ROMs that you have of N sixty four games, like Banjo Kazooie, that one I guess, and Jet. Grind Radio was that one of them? Jet Set. No, that was PlayStation, wasn't it? Uh, you think Jet Force Gemini? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, yeah, okay. Jet Force I was Gemini. Like, Jet Set great. Radio was an Xbox game, I think. I love that game. And Diddy Kong Racing. Yes. Oh my god, that's the best game. Oh. <laughs> See, listen, I, I was so good at that one. Pokemon uh, Snap. Don't forget Ugh. Star Fox 64. Come on. If the only I, the only Star Fox game. I mean, I think the only cool thing about about this mod is that you don't just play as a bunch of different Marios. Like you can. You can Waluigi. play Waluigi. Yeah, you can play well, Waluigi. In the Wario. version that's on um the Advance or the DS or whatever it was, you can play as like Yoshi, Luigi, and Peach or something. No, it's Wario, Yoshi, and Luigi. Oh, okay. No well, in, th- in this video, though, they also yeah. have Peaches and like Toadstool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Wait, so like what happens if you're playing as Yoshi and you get all 120 stars? Do you fire up on the castle and find yourself? Yep. Yeah, because oh, you're playing next to yourself it. anyway. There's like 800 Mario's and three billion there's Luigi's. Actually, there's actually only 23 other people. No, there's 800 billion <laughs> and a Mario. 
So uh, I, I just, I don't know. Like, I think that the benefits of playing as Waluigi are are pretty awesome. I mean, he's still, like, he's uncircumcised. So, <laughs> like, there's that's gotta be, news, right? Th- 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 that- th- th- that's got to th- like, he's more aerodynamic, right? Like, well, I was going to, I was going to include that news with um, Mario having nipples. I was going to do those together. Oh, well, why, too bad. why did you not? We haven't gotten there yet. We're on you the first story. How, how, how did you not lump every Nintendo story together? Because I just did a quick scan of the news stories. And did, uh, did you do you not notice that he's not very good at that? Like, it's very, yeah. very rarely. It's that all over the fucking place. It is. relate to each other. They're not next to each other. Man. I know. Well, I, I, like, th- think of the you got to think of the narrative that you're putting out there. Like you've you you know what I mean? Like it there's gotta be a flow to it. So well, chunk yeah, all of your you... Nintendo stuff together and then you know, like there's and then pl- include the Pokemon shit, the in there. All, yeah, this shit's all random. When I'm doing the news, I do jump around a lot. Oh, God, you guys are yeah, mad. you probably shouldn't. Oh. Yeah, we you should, should probably have one, be organized in one some whole way. story. The news should be a story because well, it's a news story. Well, not to it's mention when, when when topics have to do with each other follow each other, you have built-in segues. Speaking of Nintendo, uncircumcised Waluigi. See? Oh. Speaking of uncircumcised, yeah, see, I, see, Mario I gave, see, what I did was I gave you a perfect bridge into that story, and you were like, well, it's later on the outline <laughs> instead of just going like, yeah, they did confirm that. Isn't that fucked up? And also Mario has nipples. <laughs> Boom. Knocked them both out. Knocked both both of that so done. fucked up. They're That's what done. a pro does. That's what a pro does. I wanted to go off of him talking about the uh, SNES Classic and talk about the N64 or the N64 Classic, talk about the NES Classic, and now I can't do that either. I hate this job. This <laughs> it's probably because you're bad at it. That doesn't help. See, I don't mind doing drops because I'm the best at it. So uh, you, you, de- you're the, you debatable. deserve the power problems, not me. You should be the one <laughs> <laughs> having z- electrical zots happen at you every thirty-five seconds. You know, hold your tongue because my internet is liable to go out if you start pushing it, man. <laughs> then we're just gonna well, be get, shit out of luck. Get your fucking news stories right. <laughs> All right, so Destiny 2 launched this week, and if Bungie's to be believed, it had a pretty good launch. They claim millions of players have already jumped on board with the game and are expecting many more over the coming months. Has anyone tried Destiny 2? Nope. No. I don't plan on it either. No. I, I, I own it. I own it. I wanted to. That, that was on my fucking to-do list Fair. this week. But guess what? No. Power problems. Cool. Oh, if Nate's going to start playing Destiny, yeah, I'm totally out because we can't all be on the same boat as him. <laughs> no, we well, can't. No, no, no. No. The, d- the difference is, is that that's we're going to get it on PC. That's why I'm. Oh, mainta- that's right. Like, that's why I'm maintaining my Pokemon obsession is just to wall you out of playing it because I know you like it. <laughs> he actually had a huge, huge explosion at us at us one day. I'm pretty sure it was that checkpoint. Like, we were talking about something. Then out of nowhere, he's just like, you know, it's such bullshit that when I finally get into Pokemon, you guys stop playing. <laughs> I, know. Well, I thought that was on a show. That was on yeah, a that was, show. That was a show. Oh, yeah. Was yeah, that was yeah. that was on a, that was on an FEC, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Here's now. Here's the problem, though. Is he started playing PUBG, but I still like that game. I don't want to quit. Well, you haven't had to play with him yet, so it's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 Have you won a yeah, game I'm gonna yet? St- uh, no, I haven't actually. Fair enough. I've I've been top four, but I haven't won a game. Nice. Another game, by the way, that I can't fucking play right now. Thanks for the reminder, asshat. Does your laptop not handle it? I've, you know what? I've not tried it on the laptop. You, I like, don't... If you're not streaming, you can run it on pretty crappy hardware. It's I not mean, hard. It does have a 950M in it. I might be able to do it. I think you're fine. Uh, Gay. Maybe. I'll maybe, maybe I'll give it a shot. Uh, in addition, so speaking of Destiny 2, the game's first raid, Leviathan, was downed in roughly six hours. The legend himself was the group who claimed the world first on the raid, and with its completion, the next Crucible map, Emperor's Respite, becomes available to all players. There, you see how you segued from Destiny into Destiny Raid? Good job. Yay! It's a good thing that I put the stories in that order. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> I knew you well. would. I, uh, by the way, can I, uh, can I just say uh, from a conceptual level, how cool that is where the next tier of raids doesn't become available to anyone until one group clears until the first set. Somebody does. Yeah. Yeah. That's there, 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 there's always been a lot of really cool things uh, that have been used in destiny that I really liked. I honestly, I don't know why I never hopped on 
on the first one. Um, because it, it got really repetitive really fast and there wasn't but, but a lot to the, do after a certain point. I never Out of the gate, yeah. Right. Like the, Two the, things, Nika. First of all, I never played it to begin with to know that. And second of all, our MMO of choice is doing exactly that right now. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's not wrong. The thing is, is that it was like, it was uh, very grindy out of the gate and they had, yeah. they fixed it in subsequent patches. Like it needed a lot of fixing. Destiny 2, they're going at it with a much better approach from what I understand, mm -hmm. from what people are telling me is that they learned a lot of, you know, of, of what they did wrong in Destiny 1 and are subsequently fixing it for Destiny 2. Well, why would an MMO developer find out what they're doing wrong and then stop doing the thing they're doing wrong? Man. I know, just, I know because Shouldn't we you just played... rehash their content and just keep doing the wrong things I know, less of it? I know because we... <laughs> I know we play. I know because we play Final Fantasy fourteen, and because Square Enix is so dead set on doing the wrong thing all the way until it buries them, uh, that you know I can see why you would have that uh, opinion. But no, that's not what you're supposed to do. Really? Huh. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. We've been the more you know. Wrong. Yeah. Uh, in an interview with Tech Syndicate, Bethesda's marketing boss Pete Hines made it known that the company has another previously unannounced title releasing this year. Guys, what do you think it's going to be? I'm going to go with uh, the the sort of like half installment of of Fallout, kind of like how we had Fallout Three, then New Vegas, Fallout Four, and now we'll have like the Salem Trials because that's the only other Massachusetts town I know. <laughs> Boston. I I think I don't know, man. I, I think that they've got a lot of options for what they could do. Um, you know, they they own a lot of IPs. Card they do. game. They do. Um, no, <laughs> fuck off. No, card game. No, what? No, what? No, no. Stop. FPS stop, stop. card no, game. No, That's where my mind no. went. Oh, oh my god, guys, they're already doing the Elder Scrolls card game. They're not going to come up with two card games. Oh, are they, they? Are they doing an Elder Scrolls card game? Yes, it's called like Legends or something. What? They're I doing a Fallout card game. Um, no. <laughs> Why would they come up with two different card games? I don't, because I don't. card games are hot right now i mean <laughs> they don't need two of them though yeah. why would they not come there's out like, two card games? to be fair card there's like literally almost no overhead like once you have i uh, no, of okay there's so many there's so much quality assurance you have to do you have to test the cards against other cards and have to have so much people like try the cards against there's, other people hang on, it's, shut up. it's so much you shut have up. to do it's no. very, very hard. You would understand because you don't play card games. No, okay, listen, bro. listen, listen. Trigger. That sh that shit that shit is spoiler alert. Uh, kind of easy to figure out if that has been your entire job for the better part of like 30 years. So all of those people who launched all of those various card games in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s based around all those different IPs for like shit like Wizards of the Coast or whatever. I don't I don't know who else makes that. There was Tops. a card game Tops. for everything. I don't know. There was. Konami. There was, a, there was a card game for literally fucking everything. So those rules are actually kind of pretty easy to suss out game balancing is a normal part of development you have to do so much less work with assets with graphic development involved in a card game than you would a normal game there's as much normal game balancing that goes into every you know a, a, a regular video game as there is in a card game, if not way more, probably way more. Yeah, and there are so many fucking nerds out there like you, Chris, who would eat <laughs> up the chance to PTR and test stuff for free that there's no overhead to that. Oh, please, you can't trust the, the ideas of nerds on the internet. They would make the game so terrible. But it's 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 the same, dude. It's the same development tactic and strategy as <laughs> making mobile games or switching from AAA to mobile games because they do make money. That's the stupid part is that these card games, like there, if it, the difference between making a physical card game and a digital card game, like there's so much more overhead doing a digital fucking card game, so much more, like. You have to actually print a fucking physical product to be able to do a physical card game. Not only that, but now you get to inject 
microtrans and loot boxes into a non-physical fucking product. Well, you got to sell those shiny cards. Oh, my shiny God. cards are the best ones. That's why they cost four times as much. Yeah, you, know? you, gotta, you have to get holographic cards in virtual reality now. <laughs> this, it, this shit is such a fucking racket. Like, how yeah. do you not, like, and, and the thing is, is that people keep just shelling out for it and not like even if your game has a low user base there are people who shell out enough like like thousands of dollars for these microtrans items you know look at things like fucking maple story dude like there used to be people who would spend ungodly amounts of money used to I probably still do. It's I don't there. even know. There are a bunch of people that still play that. Absolutely. But, but wow. you, it's it's the couple of people that spend, you know, five, six, ten thousand dollars <laughs> on shit in that game that is able to keep it afloat. And that was and all that's, glamour. And the and and that's why, you know, like there are so many like traditional game companies as well as new development projects that are trying to cash in on that. But it's a bubble. Ultimately, that shit's a bubble, and it's going to burst. It's just a question of when. Yeah, okay. Well, in my experience, bubbles haven't burst, case in point, <laughs> Nintendo. In fact, you're just adding to our bubble, Mr. That, Nate. That is admittedly a bubble that no one can comprehend. It makes no sense. It defies all logic. <gasps> That's it. Nintendo needs to make a card game. <laughs> haven't they done that? Mm. They don't have a card game? I, I actually, I actually find that. Card game. I, I mean, that actually, model. technically, it's there. I think there is a physical Nintendo or a physical Mario, uh, Mario One card game that's out recently released. So Nintendo they have digital board games, but not <laughs> card games. Nintendo before they made video games used to make playing cards. So it would be hugely ironic <laughs> if they just. It just circled all the <laughs> way back around to a digital card deck, and that's the thing they make the most money off. You want to know how you could really, really destroy Nate? Imagine if the Pokemon Switch game was somehow card based. Yeah, well, no, it's, they it's did just. Have but remember Pokemon card game, the yes. actual game? That was the yes. best yeah. game. I no. loved it. No, it's it still no, around, it was not. Mika. It's still it, around today, and it still sucks ass. Wait, really? The one that was on like the Game Boy? Yeah. Well, I mean, ah. that trading card game still exists today. No, I'm talking Nika, about the Game Boy game. Nika, you can play the card game I know, but electronically the, right. on the internet for free. But the, yes. Right, but I'm talking about how the Game Boy game, how there were like gym leaders and you had to beat them with the card. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. And then you'd win and you'd get booster packs for winning. It was so cool. It was, it was like there was like a mini Pokemon game inside the card game right. where it's like you're walking around, um, you know, battling trainers. Yeah, and stuff. it was the and exact yeah, same gyms. thing as a regular Pokemon yeah. game, but you would start with cards instead of a starter Pokemon. That, that actually and, like, was kind of a cool concept. It was really awesome. That was one of my favorite games. I'm pretty sure I still own it. But the card but, game was ass. Yes, the card game was <laughs> yeah. ass. The card game as a card game was ass. So the card bad. game now is ass because so like bad. they have dude, they have so EX many EX monsters. Yes, exactly. Oh my dude, god. See, fucking it's dumb. It's so to, stupid now. They had to do a new set uh where it was the original set being reprinted but with the Pokemon all stronger than they were because there's been so much power creep over the years that all the original Pokemon are yep. useless. See, here's the here's Wait. the thing: is if they did, like, if Pokemon wanted to do a card game on the Switch, they could do it. It would be Pokemon trading card game. It would never supplant the original series. Oh no, no, you're right. It wouldn't. If they wanted, like, I, I what I'm worried about, and I am kind of worried about this, is that when they do make the jump to the Switch or whatever next gen they're doing, I mean, we've so 2020. We've heard so many rumors that they're, you know, like, and even the anime is hinting that they're going back to Kanto, that I'm really worried that they're going to revamp the game with a new battle system. No. That's, that's, dude, that's, no. that's going to be, yes. Like, it's going to be well, FF15. Nintendo Pokemon. knows that all the people that were super into them when they were kids are now the money spending age. And that's exactly what they're doing. Oh. I, Anything to get people of our generation spending money, they're going to do it. Nothing no, new. They're n they're never gonna touch the Pokemon Golden Goose Egg. They'll have like spinoffs like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, which is like uh, rogue like Pokemon. They'll do spinoffs like that for sure. But they're never and, gonna and, they're know, never gonna yeah. switch up the. 
the battle or, system or like Pokken. I didn't see Pokemon, like I just yeah. I just don't know. I, I I like that's that's really the only thing that could kill it for me because the Pokemon have degenerated into such stupidity. It, it, you know, yeah. Like, did you see now, this newest one that's just like a Pokeball? I fucking did, and it's so bad. Like, there's the although I do have to appreciate that there's the one Ultra Beast that looks like a wall, and so every meme I've seen has had uh, what's his name, Young Goose, uh, or <laughs> fucking the Trump, <laughs> the Trump Pokemon <laughs> with the wall. It's pretty funny. Yeah. It's honestly those jokes have been pretty good. But yeah, the one that looks like Zerkatry fucked a clown. Like, what is that shit? The New um, Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Ball, or, or what? The New oh York. Oh my Year's god, Ball. so yeah. bad, so bad. And then I, I think we get a new form of Lichen Rock. Um, but other than only that, only if you pre-order. Really? I think that 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 dust form Lichen Rock is only if you pre-order. Fuck, I got a pre-order. Oh no! God, see why? This, I, know, I, I didn't know. even know all Terrible. this shit about the see, new I Pokemon. Thought, I, I actually, was trying to make a Pokemon Generation One joke where, oh, it's a Pokemon, it's a Pokeball. That's great. Uh, that's great design. Or Grimer, it's oh, a so blob. You're, yeah, yeah, you're making fun of uh, fun Gen of Electra, One Pokemon. Yeah, yeah for being shitty. Yeah, that's what I was going for. But no, whoosh, way over at Nate's head. He was over. He was over on Highway 51. I was over here back out the driveway. He was gone. So, so then go ahead and defend those new ultra beasts man i didn't even see them yet how how go look them up go how you're sitting that, in front of a fucking computer go look so them up bad. how is it that callie and i watched the nintendo direct and the nintendo fanboy did not hey, I know, listen here let's not idiot. use words like watch oh, no. okay i you slept watched. through half of it <laughs> you were listening i saw I you know i was oh but i was i was having bad dreams couldn't help it <laughs> bad dreams of boring things from my childhood that suck today yeah is there only two things yeah that's it that, that they've revealed two new that's ultra beasts. okay yes. look look nate look nate well, there's nate, also nate, there was no a, hang on, no hang on. look look this is why i don't buy fucking remakes because what's the fucking point two new pokemon new areas there's actually be new areas and stuff yeah like i i what i'm expecting with sun and moon ultra is like what i was buying sun and moon for right like it <laughs> That's that. That's why. That's why you want to buy two... a complete game, and that's why you're gonna buy a exactly. second game. Yes. Yeah. This is DLC, except it's not downloadable. It's just you know purchasable in a little game pack. I know exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but that's to be fair. That's what fucking Black and White Two was. I didn't. Bu- did I buy? Oh, I guess I did buy that one. Yeah. So you shut the fuck up. Okay, well, that was one. I didn't buy. Did you, and you wait, hang you. You bought. You bought uh, uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. I mean, w- uh, other than oh, the I guess graf- technically, I didn't. The, other beat than the graph, other than the graphics update, that's basically the same Actually, fucking thing. Chris, they don't he, care he if you even beat it. it. No, guys, he didn't even play that because I yeah. actually went and got his his <laughs> cart from him. He had got maybe two hours into it and played through it so that I could get the cart specific legendaries from. They him. don't care that he played it. They cared that he dropped thirty nine ninety nine. Exactly. It. It's that's even. It's, it about. actually undercuts his point even yes. more that he bought it and then didn't even play it. <laughs> Okay, so so here's here's my point. I'm actually going to play the whole fucking thing, but I do expect there's a couple of things that I expect. Like I expect there to be like more. Um, uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, TM trainers like move move tutors. That's it. Like I expect there to be like actual move tutors in the game and not bullshit. I hope that they get rid of the fucking friendship plaza or whatever that is, although I know that they won't. Um, but I, I I expect it to be sort of like what Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire added to the game because they took a lot of um, they took a lot of really competitive aspects out of there when they took Move Tutors out. So, God, Robbie, don't you just hate it when competitive Pokemon players try to like spew their knowledge on you? It's just so annoying. Anyway. Oops. So that's uh, that's it for the Bethesda story. Yeah, for that Bethesda. I wonder what game's coming out for Bethesda. <laughs> so yeah, I I think it's probably not Elder Scrolls Six. Anyway, uh, <laughs> dr- <laughs> what, that what spiraled off because of card game and that is that where yeah I don't know how oh, we yeah. got there. Thanks for that. Thanks You're for welcome. that total fucking tangent. I was gonna make a, a side a comment, guys. About how Konami should go make another card game, but instead of uh, having it be Yu-Gi-Oh, they should have it be Metal Gear Solid, stop, the card stop, game. Stop, stop. 
And there could be like two phases. There could be like a That's sneaking phase. That's already a game. It's called Metal Gear Acid, you fucking retard. <laughs> It existed and for the PSP. It would be you know a remake, you fucking though, idiot. From Konami, I would take a Suikoden card game just to prove that they haven't forgotten about Suikoden. God Suikoden. damn it, Luka, don't, don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. I need to know that they it's still done. love It's done. Just don't know. No. They're done. Terrible. It's no. done. It's done. No. That is not the same company that made those games. It is just not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Hey, Nika, you should... You should play the new Suikoden games. They're called Fire Emblem, and they're available on Nintendo <laughs> products. <laughs> they're not just not that. at all the same. Not just type that. Of game, but not just they're... that. But the the people who work at Konami currently fucking hate the people who made that game. They don't just. They don't just want really? to like. Oh, I mean, fuck. I know that the team yes, were all disbanded. And no, no, no. It. Anyone who works at Konami now hates anyone who used to work at Konami 10 years ago because they're doing okay. shit like trying to deny them health care. <laughs> that's fair. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like that's how that's how what that's the company that we're currently talking about when we currently talk about Konami. We're talking about the same company that has tried to deny people who used to work for them fucking health care. Yeah. There is no way that anyone who touched Suikoden, the original game, or any of the subsequent sequels is still even has a job there much less is liked by anyone at that company if i'm i i think you're, if you're you probably could, entirely correct yeah. if you could like if you could find a current konami employee right and that current konami employee found an old konami employee on fire they would not stop to pee on them to put them out nor would they like take a ex fire extinguisher or something reasonable like they, they would might just take a selfie though to show everybody else back at the office that's probably true they might they, stop they to enjoy the charbroil smell but that's about it they dump some more Yu-Gi-Oh cards on them to fuel the fire well, that's a good use of Yu-Gi-Oh cards all righty so Director Bruce Straley has resigned from Naughty Dog. His 18-year tenure with the company had him serving as director for games such as The Last of Us and the Uncharted series. While he's given no specifics, his departure letter from Naughty Dog suggests he will be continuing his career as a game developer. Bye, Bruce. Miss you. I like well, Naughty we... Dog. Yeah, he made, I liked Uncharted. I thought they were pretty good. Yeah, you know, I always wonder but though <clears throat> when you have one because obviously, obviously, you know, developer teams and stuff are so big. I always wonder how much impact certain people have, right? Because like when when a bunch of big people left World of Warcraft, that's still doing fine. But when uh, Casey Hudson left Bioware, then suddenly because of Aaron Flynn, we got Andromeda, and now Casey Hudson's back. And I, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I just wonder. That's Casey all. Hudson's back and presumably going. What did you do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the largest heist in the history of EVE Online was perpetrated last week. A long-term play by Goon Swarm saw a player by the name of The Judge flip from his corporation and relinquish trillions of ISK worth of ships and currency to the goons. ISK. <laughs> everyone just says ISK, dude. ISK. Stop. It is ISK, you're right, but everyone just says ISK. It's Imperial no. Space Credits. I have Why is it spelled with a K? Because they're from Iceland. I don't know. Uh, anyway, for Because they're racists? No. Only racists spell things with a K instead of a C. I, is that a thing? Is that true? Is Ultimessia a racist? What? Wait, what? What are you fucking talking? Why are you? Hang I don't on. Why am I? Why am I? I know. <laughs> Joe, why? Why do I bother? Cal Callie, why yeah. are you taking anything that this guy says seriously? Sorry. Why do you ever? I'm sorry. I was busy changing my name to C A L I because I don't want to be a racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Robbie, that's, that's smart roof. Robbie, I'm uh, gonna let you uh, take this story because I know you were super into this. Yeah, no. Every, every time a big Eve story comes out, like I get so embroiled in it because, like, what when you hear these stories, these always sound like the best games that none of us will ever play because you know you're never gonna get into these positions. And and the reason this one in particular, like, like grabbed me so much is because all of like the flipping of this this the judge guy, you know, to the to to this other side actually happened in real life at like the big conferences that they have for like the top echelon of players over in Iceland. So reading through this story, it felt like I was reading like a cold war novel, right? Like they'd meet up in person. He'd get him away from like all the friends and stuff like that. And 
just the whole thing was so, so interesting. And the best part about it too was he was essentially, the judge was essentially like the second in command of the alliance that he fucking decimated. And the guy who actually ran it, Gig X, I think, not only did he lose everything in his alliance, he actually got banned from the game because he logged onto the game when it was happening and started issu er, issuing all kinds of threats. You know, just being generally, obviously, you know, raging and mad and stuff like that. Just yeah. being pissed. Yeah. Well, of course, and he had every right to be, right? Um, but someone was streaming the particular chat that he was in because he was talking in a private like alliance chat but somebody on that alliance was streaming and so everyone watching that stream saw him issuing these violent threats and uh tons and tons and tons of people reported him for it and uh he was permanently banned from the game as a result it was something to the I... effect of him asking like uh anyone who has his his real life location uh please send it to me his real yeah. life name his friends and family's names get them for me uh and then he's like and judge i know you can still read this so enjoy your hands while you have them that's such a ah. that's such a stupid thing to kind of convey as a threat like only a fucking only a lawyer would be able to read that and be like yeah that's a fucking you know like there's no way that anyone reasonably looks at that and is like oh this guy's gonna kill someone like no this seems like they a very concentrated no this hands, is so we can't this play is, games anymore this is definitely a concentrated <laughs> effort by the goon swarm to ruin somebody's online Fuck. I could see that. I could absolutely. Well, it was see that. successful. <laughs> uh, it's it. That's a hundred percent what it is, and I think that kind of sucks. Like, yeah, fuck him up in the game, and you know, like take a shit, whatever. Like okay, that's but, part. But that's part fair, of the game. That's part of the it game. It is. It is. But keep in mind, this is the biggest heist to date. Twenty thousand dollars worth of of like in game stuff gone. Let me ask you this, Nate. If you were him. Would you even still be playing Eve after that? No, I mean probably not. But the thing is, though, is that like to have the to have um what is it uh, CCP go as far as yeah. to to ban him in you know his character permanently, I I think that that's that's a fucking dumb move, especially because it's super obvious, super fucking obvious that a the guy wasn't going to do anything about it. B that it was just goon swarm going, oh, he said a naughty and like just fucking, <laughs> you know, like it's well, you're not allowed to say naughties on the internet, Nate. Okay. That's no fucking, naughties. That's so stupid. Why do you think that naughty dog got out of there? Because he got he was gonna say something naughty. Fuck dog. off. You're an idiot. Uh, that was unpleasant. Why do you ever talk? Sometimes I talk about card well, games. What? <laughs> you, yes, you, you guys chose to give him a mic. This, this is what happens. It's not on yeah. me. I can't mute him. Only, only a Nero can. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Blizzard has pushed up the release of their Shadow Fox pet, one they had planned for their annual charity pet. In the wake of the recent hurricanes in North America and widespread flooding in Asia, Blizzard has released the pet ahead of schedule for ten dollars. Every cent of the sales go on. Every cent of the sales on the Shadow Fox will go to American Red Cross Disaster Relief and International Federation of Red Cross. Wow! Every cent, not just like three fifty of it. Yeah, Shadows not, of War. Not three dollars and fifty cents of it. No, every penny. Have Shadow you guys? Awesome. Have, have you guys seen have you guys seen some of the uh, latest commercials uh, for Shadow of War? There's one that I thought was kind of in bad taste. Oh, really? oh yeah, no. I, have not I don't think I've seen it. Starts off starts off with an orc in uh in the bedroom of someone who's dying. Or no, I'm sorry, in the hospital room of someone who's dying. And like he I don't he like it's resuscitates for that, it's for that DLC, isn't it? And he goes, Not today. No, it's not. It's not for the DLC. It's just for the game. It's for the oh, game's release. Okay. And he goes, Not today. And it's sort of like like he's got this orc companion by his side throughout his entire life, whatever. And I'm just like, that's a really weird way to go and advertise your game whose DLC you're trying to sell for someone who died on your development team. Like, right? Like, if that's an open part of your marketing strategy, why would you go? with this because it almost seems like they're th like like thumbing their nose at the fact that oh well you're gonna have to pay for you know what i mean like if i was this guy's family i'd be pissed that's that's what i'm saying is that like i mean as an outside observer i was like ah that may not be in the best taste but if i was this guy's family dude i'd be fucking furious that's ridiculous uh. wow send me send me all the fucking money that you want don't you know don't mock 
my my husband's death on you know in the marketing right. of your game or don't try to profit off of my husband's death from the marketing of your game Ugh. i don't know man i i i've it made it made me feel uncomfortable yeah it's making it harder and harder for me to want to play this game and yeah and, which sucks because like shadows wow. of war was really or shadow shadow of mordor, shadow of mordor. yeah i'm, really I'm playing good. it right now and I'm, I'm actually enjoying it but man oh i know there's just a, at least, so much at least i didn't around for it, it. Well, that makes it better. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z has revealed their first original character, and don't worry, she was designed by series creator Akira Toriyama. Uh, Android 21 has been revealed to have an intellect nearly on par with Dr. Jiro himself, though we know little else about her at this point. She looks really cool. She's got red hair, and she's really sexy. I want to know where she came from, because was, Dr. Was Jiro say, was Android actually... 20, and he died. It's, it's, she's not in the anime, then? Like, no, she's, she's a game she's original. A fighter? Mm-hmm. Yep. She's an original for the game. I'm glad that they got Toriyama to do it. Then again, he, he'll do pretty much anything if you throw a bag of money at him at this, at this point. Do you think that uh, we'll end up seeing her in any of the? Are there any? We could end up seeing her in, in currently in going Super. right now. Yeah, yeah. In Super. Yeah. May, I don't know. Like, given what's going on in Super right now, I don't know where Android 21 would fit in. Like, there's already two Android. Like, 17 and 18 are. It's characters. a long lost Bro. triplet of the two of them. Bro. This is Dragon Ball that we're talking about. <laughs> I was going to say, I know. do they need, like, really good reason nope. to bring new characters in? I didn't sure really know. No. 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 So nope. what's they, the, hold on, what's the not. point of, like, adding a, a brand new fighter to Dragon Ball's Fighter Z? Like, yeah, it's not like they don't have is, enough. Isn't the whole point of, like, playing a Dragon Ball Z fighting game is to play as Dragon Ball Z characters? Well, she's a character. Yeah, no, she's an original character. Yeah. Don't you want to play as the... Like Goku and Vegeta's and <laughs> all the other guys. <laughs> I mean, that's you know, like that's not a bad point. There are so many fucking Dragon Ball characters out there that are not already in the game that it feels like why would you go to the trouble of? But see, Lloyd a has one? a good point that like there's always a tournament series in like every arc, so they're gonna have some tournament from another world and she'll be from that place no they're doing they're doing that arc right now where they're fighting from all, all 11 uni- she, universes she, what, if, are what if she shows up from that uh well i don't know i mean we do have like frieza's clone from another universe and frieza fighting <laughs> what? in this tournament that what is if, so what dumb if android 18 and 19 fusion in no no stop don't that no, would be like android like 35 it. android 19 don't. is that big clown fat guy do not ruin 18 for me please Let, 17 and listen. 18 are the brother and sister Listen, listen. If if you're if you're saying that fusion ruins characters, Nika, I hate no, to break Android it. No, Android 18 is my favorite character. Please don't like. But 19 is the big fat clown one. Yes, that's, that's what part. I was saying. Like, no, <laughs> no, do not merge 18 and 19. Oh, that, actually, yeah, no, that would be really funny. <laughs> Let's do that. No, you're crazy. No. There, there, no. Uh, there was a thing that they had going on for a while where there was a. I don't remember which Dragon Ball game it was, but it, it had fusion in it, so you could fuse your characters. And I believe you could fuse 19 with a bunch of characters. There you what? go. Ugh. Stupid. Absolutely. The worst the I think the worst part about Dragon Ball is the fact that DBZ abridged is on hiatus. That just makes me sad. Yeah, it's I hard, get, isn't it? They'd probably have a field day with Super too. I wonder. They would have sad. a great time with Super. I, actually, maybe not. Super's already really dumb on its own. <laughs> they I'm don't not need sure any what, help. what you can do to it. Like, I watch it, but I'm not happy about it. I mean, did you watch the original Dragon Ball Z? It was also I pretty did. dumb. It was that, also going back dumb. and watching the original now, you can see, like, as a kid, we thought it was the coolest thing ever, but it's not. That's kind of the thing. Is like I, wa- I was watching Super. <laughs> it's and really not. I was watching it knows the, it, uh, too. Yeah, no, I'm watching the arc where now it's got, like, you know, Trunks is back and doing stuff, and I'm like, Toriyama, you don't care anymore, do you? <laughs> And then no. you go back and watch Dragon Ball, you're like, oh, you never cared at one point. Ever. Actually, the original Dragon Ball was a bit better than Dragon Ball Z. I like, disagree. In, in I terms like of Dragon pacing and in terms of character development, I, I feel like it was a bit better. Uh, uh, Callie, I'm on board. I, I don't like think he more. ever. I don't think he ever cared. No, I don't he didn't think care he, ever. At I don't point. think he ever cared. Like I, literally, I, he got to Dragon Ball Z and they're like, hey, we want you to make more. He's like, no, I want to make a space alien one. He's like, you can do that. It's just got to be called Dragon Ball Z. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, whatever. Goku's an alien now, and they're like, fine, make us more money. And they did. Do you know how many... The Cell Saga, do you know what that was actually like? 19 and 20 were supposed to be the end of the Android Saga. Yep. They were actually supposed to be the bad guys. And then his uh, editors came and said, they look dumb. You need to make someone cooler. So he made 17 and 18 instead. 
Uh, 18 is my favorite, so I will never criticize well, that. Well, it worked choice. out for you then because they made 17 and 18, and they said, yeah, they're cool, but they're not cool enough. You need to make <laughs> something cooler than that. And so they ma- he made Cell, and they're like, yeah, this will work. And that's where the <laughs> Cell saga came from. <laughs> and then, and then, is he chained to a radiator during his college? <laughs> yes, he, he's been chained to a radiator for the last twenty years. And then they took an entire dump truck of money and backed it up to his house and said, "Make the Majin Buu saga." He's like, "Okay," and he's like, "All right, I, I guess." Fine. And then, uh, yeah. So then, Super came. Why out else and... would you do it? Because he 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 said, like, dude, after Frieza, it was supposed to be done. After Cell, it was supposed to be done. And came back, he did Majin Buu. They only well, talked like, him into keep going after Frieza because they're like, well, you started this kind of arc with Gohan. You don't want to finish it? And he's like, well, I do. All right. <laughs> I'll come back. I don't, and then they're like, all right, yeah, now with Majin Buu, you need to make Gohan suck again. And he's like, what? So Yeah, that really bothered me that Gohan had actually built so strong and he was going to be this the next Goku, basically. And then, yeah. you know, then in nope. the Cell Saga, he's reduced to not... I mean, in the Buu Saga, he's reduced they to nothing. They finally made Gohan not Spoilers. suck Spoilers! He's pretty decent now. He's okay. When... When when does Gohan uh become say say a man in the Boo saga? Is that it? Okay, yeah, that's so when it, he it's, does it's officially that, suck. It's the time skip. So they 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 beat Cell and then there's the time skip. And I just feel like there's because they they were always saying about how you know the half Saiyans have have more power because the power works differently. So like, why would he lose that power? I don't. It's dumb. Yeah, it's fucking uh, Dragon Ball. Why are we why are we trying to pick apart Dragon Ball? There's it doesn't make sense. Why not? Toriyama doesn't make doesn't make it bother to make sense. No, so he just wants way. to have another Super Sentai for us in every series. And don't worry, don't you worry. There is one now in in Dragon Ball Super. The the uh the Pride Troopers. They're here. They're the great. The Pride Troopers. Oh yeah, that's a thing that's happening right now. Wow. Are you okay. actually keeping current on Super? I am. I watch it every. every I time have it comes not. Out. I plan oh on at God. some point, but I have not. I got a so, crossy roll subscription. That's pretty I'm impressive. Using it for something. Kelly. In impressive. relation to the Cell Saga and yeah. the Frieza Saga yeah. and Dragon Ball uh, T Super, mm-hmm. how does that relate to the card game that's currently going on? Evolution. Yes. Um. I where no where does idea. the lore come in? The lore of this picks up at the end of. Uh, it's at the end of the Boo Saga is where this picks no, up. No, no, the card game. I have no idea. What, I don't play that card game. Well, I, I, mean, co- I collected a bunch of them when I was a kid. I still no, have them. And but. Nika, I can't they figure out why you're trying game. to answer him. There's a new card game for it. Wait, there's a new card game. Like, that's mm-hmm. separate from the original card game. It, it, it's a new run of it, and it's, it is it is supposedly it can interact with the old version. I don't know. I haven't oh touched it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, okay but the card you game lore is ignore. It's really important for me in every card game because I like to role play as I'm playing all the card games. I'm pretty like, sure the Dragon uh, You actually be- don't like doing that because I ruined the original WoW card game. For you doing before. That. the original uh, Dragon Ball Z card game didn't ha- didn't fit in the lore. It was just like here's all the characters play with them. I didn't think there was actually lore that mattered with the card game. It screwed uh, a lot of things up because it put power thing. levels on everyone. That, that like, these don't make any sense. I mean, just like how some of the Broly movies don't fit into the timeline either. They're just there. A lot of the movies don't fit in the None timeline. of the movies are canon. They're just they're None. just there. Yeah. None, None of zero them. of them are. Although now we do have a legendary Super Saiyan. Uh, I in think the canon. I'm pretty sure history of Trunks is pretty canon, but. No, none of them are canon. Yeah, it is. It's totally canon. Actually, no, she might be right about that. History of Trunks might be. But I don't know. I don't know if that's considered. Because it's only in, like, his past time, and it ends. No, 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 no. Like, but I think when he comes I... to the present day. The, the Isn't canon that... version of it is what they showed in the actual episodes where he goes back to his time and you see what he faced. No, no, that's no. different. The canon version. No. No, uh, no, no. When he goes back to his time, that's when he defeats yeah. everything at the end. Right. Like this, right. History of Trunks is literally what caused him to go back and try to save Goku from the heart virus. From the place. first time, yeah. Right. Uh, no, right, right, and that and is... It, and, it, and it ends the second that he, like, sees Goku. Like, as the credits are rolling, you're seeing clips from the anime when he meets Goku. Right. So, like, um, it leads up to that point. I don't know. Toriyama's usually been pretty steadfast that none of the movies are canon. Maybe that's an exception. I'm pretty... That is, I feel like on. History of Trunks has got to be. Shut the fuck up! I think technically that's an OVA. Oh, I think technically that really? was original. It was broken into, I think, three episodes. Okay, then that's oh, fair. Oh, really? But so yeah. I don't think I don't think they actually. Uh, I don't think in terms of like the movies versus the series that they technically classify that as a part of the movie. Interesting. Oh, okay. I've never heard that. I was excited because we did it in Super. We now have a legendary Super Saiyan. One of the Saiyans from Universe Six can turn into it, and it's pretty funny because she's like 
fucking ripped when she turns into. Wait, it's a girl. Still, it's There's a girl, girl Saiyan. Super Saiyans now. There's two girl Saiyans in, in Universe Six. Oh Where my the gosh! How have you been, Nika? These I fucking have not been feminazis up on Super. are inf infiltrating all parts of my well. favorite uh, weeaboo culture, <laughs> and I hate it. Because I was always so pissed <laughs> off that I mean, Where's I know my G Pepe frog. I know GT <laughs> has been completely like retconned, also, but I was yes. so mad during GT that like Pan was the main <laughs> character and she was never a Super Saiyan. It was yeah, stupid. No, so, I was like, sucked. why are girls not Super Saiyan? So that makes me happy. Because they're Super Saiyan, which sounds like men. They're not Super Was Saiyans. What? No. That what? sounds like wussies. What are you talking about? No, they uh, they did have her become the legendary Super Saiyan, and it's great because she still I'm hates Goku. Super happy about that. Oh, <laughs> and, see, it Chris, no it's sense. not enough. They finally have Wonder Woman. Now they need Saiyans too, oh, right? God. You have one. That's all you need. <laughs> now, at least Android 18 was pretty badass, but. Is Boy, Freezer sure was Freezer sure was really bad at wiping out all the Saiyans, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, yeah, Freezer was awful at it and very bad at wiping out the Namekians. <laughs> uh, so he tried his best, guys. Mm, all he? I know is that the Frieza deck in its controlling manner is just way too overpowered. Oh my god, I'm literally Goku just never has a chance because he's just a straight fighter. Yeah. Anyway, so if you've been living <laughs> under a rock, you may have uh, missed that the Fallout 4 Creation Club has been going over like a lead balloon. Uh, one of the targets of people's ire has been the gaudy Creation Club news advertisement on the main menu of the game. In fact, the second most popular mod on Nexus Mod's Fallout 4 page is called No More Creation Club News, developed by user Inacoma Dial 911. I'll give you one guess what it does. That's right, all is it does it, is it takes that news article. Is it nude like. mod? No, that's, <laughs> no, probably, that's the most popular mod. Oh. So, so uh, look forward to Bethesda putting this in the Creation Club. <laughs> you want to get rid of that ugly ass uh, Creation Club advertisement? Here's this mod. It's awful. Creation Club has been a disaster. For it has fact. gone really bad. Um, and I mean, there's there's no excuse for it because Bethesda has gotten this wrong several times. Yep, and Minecraft of all have uh, gotten it. Pretty much as right as you can get it. Like, how hard is it to just look at what they do and be like, oh, like that? Pretty much. It's yeah, frustrating. It's... Like, some, it's like it's it's almost like dealing with Square Enix. Something that should be simple isn't. Is there a mod for Fallout 4 to let you have multiplayer? Nah. What's the point then? Yeah. Good question. What is besides the... tits? There are definitely tits. lots of tits mods. Juxta, I don't know that you can really ask what the point of anything is when your developer of choice just confirmed whether or not one of their characters is <laughs> circumcised or not. So I still don't understand the purpose of that conversation. Well, how did that come about? I have uh, no idea, and I don't want to know. It, it, it actually came about in an interview for Breath of the Wild because I remember the quote. What? He explained yep. it, and then he was like, oh, and by the way, yeah, there's uh, some more stuff coming for Breath of the Wild. And I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, no, here, I'll read the exact quote, okay? Please, this is, please do. This is, it says, Waluigi still has his foreskin. You won't ever see that it's there, but it's there. We do not know why he remains uncircumcised, however. Uh, it might be a religious thing. It might not. But yes, Nintendo players can expect some exciting downloadable content for the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Question what? that was posed. Yeah, how did that, how did that come about, though? Ever. I don't understand. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Nintendo guy, I have a twofold question. Uh, first, uh, is Waluigi circumcised? And secondly, what kind of downloadable content can we be looking forward to? For <laughs> I, I don't, I don't understand. Like, where the conversation must have been going in that direction already. Like, about someone might have asked about. Link because Link, you know, is Link had dress, Link cross dresses oh, you think in the they, game. You think they ramped up to it? No, I, I think I'm thinking maybe maybe like they like, like they were talking about Link cross dressing as the the the, the uh, no, uh, no uh, the um, yes or not no. no. That's uh, Garuda. Garuda, thank you. Garuda. Garudo. Garudo. Thank you. I got there on four <laughs> tries. I was like, me. it was on the tip of my tongue. And then, so maybe it's like the conversation stemmed from there and they're like, yeah, well, he's he's an actual, you know, he's he's not a, a, a woman. He's not a hermaphrodite. He's a man and he is circumcised. And they're like, but Waluigi, on the other hand, not circumcised. That's the only thing I can think of. I, 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 listen, I, I listen. Love you have a cannon for how to get there. Listen, he also <laughs> said as a part of the same interview, also remember shy guys, none of them have any gag reflexes. So you could really go to town if you <laughs> Are want. Are you sure this wasn't like an this onion? Has gotta, yeah, this has got to be a, like satire. 
It says that this is from a interview with Game Informer magazine. So Waluigi is uncircumcised. But how does Game Mario Informer has, have this information? Mario has nipples and no chest hair, despite being Italian. That seems unlikely. He, he, he waxes. Shaves. Does he? Oh. he Mario's to. waxing simulator. Is we going to get that pretty quick here? It's going to be a mini game uh, in the next Mario I just want to know why Game Informer would have that information. Well, they didn't. I mean, now, now, now they do. Oh, I you mean, mean Game Informer is the one who was asking the question. Yeah, that was. And they yeah. said it was the interview with Game Informer, no. though, from well, Game Informer. Okay, I was confused. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and shy guys not having a gag reflex makes sense because if you played Paper Mario, the first one, there was a shy guy world where they ate giant cakes that were like bigger than the size of their entire head. So if you're gonna fit that in your fucking mouth, you can't fucking gag on that. But they're also okay, made out of so paper Ms. in that game, so I'm not sure that counts. So, Mr. Nintendo expert, why would Waluigi be uncircumcised? Why? Why not? I think it's because it it's... adds to his character. All right. Okay. Do we know much about Waluigi's like birth and history and parents or anything? I don't think we because, do. Because okay, so my I we're know. applying, because we're of applying how, a scary amount of thought because to this. Of how weird and gangly Waluigi is, I'm assuming his parents abandoned him at birth, and so he never had the opportunity. To be circumcised. That that's a lot. That's a lot <laughs> of speculation. They usually <laughs> circumcise like at birth, like right in the right. hospital. So well, what determines? Well, who says he was born in a hospital, guys? Like, what's the what's the determination on whether you get circumcised? That's just something like your parents just decide. Yes. Yes. Oh. Wow. It absolutely is. The doctors will ask you. That's oh. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I mean, it just on. feels better. So. That's how. That's what I hear. So, props to Waluigi on a squeegee. In my experience, it's the same either way. It doesn't really matter that much. Anyway, moving on. In more important Nintendo news, amidst a relatively boring Nintendo Direct, we did find out that Doom and Wolfenstein 2 are coming out on the Switch. Don't worry, Nate. As you uh, previously alluded to, we've got some new Ultra Beasts coming, and you're getting a Celebi if you buy Gold and Silver's 3DS release. By the way, this should have been like the second story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I figured we could really just ramp this down like an hour into the show. <laughs> uh, this is this is great organizational skills here, guys. Well, we got back onto Nintendo, so it worked out. So we did end up back on the circumcised. Is Doom just a port then? Of the or is new, it like a new Doom game? It's the, it's the, uh, the most recent release Doom game. So yeah, everything 3? on the Switch except for Zelda is a port at this point. So, uh, no, no, Mika, even Zelda. Okay, port. Mario versus Rabbids. Thank you very yeah, but much. Then, but then again, we it's also on the Wii U, so I guess technically Zelda is a port. And no, ours. we're not talking about your stupid Zelda game. We're talking about Mario Cross Rabbids, which is the best game ever. Zelda is the only game that matters on the Switch, so shut up. It's on the Wii U, so it's not a Switch game, idiot. It's better on the Switch. No, it's not. It's the same. It's literally the same game. It's literally better. Wow. I, uh, Chris, are you okay? No, I have to deal with trolling Nico over here. You mean and Zelda was actually a really bad right. game. Thank it, you very much. It if wasn't. you just want to play an open world game, play an open world game, not a fucking shallow husk of a real open world game. Uh, Katie actually let me borrow her Wii U and Breath of the Wild, and I haven't touched it. I mean, there I have a lot of complaints about Breath of the Wild, but it was a very fun game. Eh, so. It was terrible. It was not. Eh. I thought you were supposed I mean, to be let's, a let's take the best like... thing about Zelda games, the dungeons, and just fucking toss it out of there. I, ag I agree. I have complaints about the dungeons. I do. I've, dude, I'm totally not into Mario and Rabbids to be able to sell me a fucking system. There's no way. It's it's basically Wii U You ports. don't like tactical grid-based games, so no. No, you wouldn't like I it. don't. No, yeah, I don't. Okay. So I wouldn't Guess like what? It. A PS4 so doesn't no... sell me on uh, Metal Gear Solid, whatever number they're on. Well, okay. it doesn't matter. Uh, zombie you could buy survival that on, mode. You could, you could buy it on PC, so whatever. Don't worry, Metal Gear Solid Survival will sell you on a PS4. There you go. Four player action with zombies. No. Crystal head zombies. We gotta have we gotta we gotta get a in an alternate going. don't forget it's in an alternate dimension, guys. It's, it's very important. Oh. Yeah. Has there like you've literally taken away at this point every reason to put Metal Gear Solid in the title? It has nothing to do with exactly. Metal Gear Solid. It's in a different yep. dimension than Metal Gear Solid. Um, if it, if it, the thing is, boss if it was, a, was in oh, the opening cutscene. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. The whole point of the game is to get back to their to get back to their own world and find Big Boss again. Yeah. That's the point of the game. Yeah, so... we, gotta find him. we gotta find that dude. The series got way more sci-fi than I remember it being. Like, I know it was always <laughs> yeah. kind of sci-fi, but I like... mean, it's it's definitely like sci-fi realistic. There's cyber ninjas. It's sci-fi. It's definitely sci-fi, but 
Psycho there's Mantis. Also some, there's also some magic going on too. <laughs> some magic. It's, it's sci-fi <laughs> fantasy. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I, you know, you don't you don't have to look at me like I'm trying to sell you on a PlayStation 4. I'm definitely not. If you don't have a reason to buy a PlayStation 4, don't buy a PlayStation 4. Wait, but I'm saying 12. But I'm saying I'm saying, you know, the Switch and Nintendo banks on their own fucking, you know, IP ins, insular products yeah. to be able to 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 market and and sell systems and it's just it's not doing it for me. I mean, basically, a PlayStation 4 at this point is like an underpowered PC. Like, you have almost the same titles between the two that... But but Nintendo is the outlier. And yet, beca- like, because they're the outlier, they should be making games that make me want to buy their system. And yet, for three generations now, they haven't, they haven't produced one game that's done that. They did it for handheld. I mean, they got me with Pokemon... But that's it. Oh, well, that's, they'll they'll get you with their uh, Pokemon mainstay RPG for the Switch. Remember that's uh, fuck go. that. No, 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 no. The guy, the the lead guy at Game Freak is like laughing his ass off at the notion of the Switch. Like there is no, 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 no. That one was because because I remember reading that interview. That was when it was first coming out. Yeah, he thought that it was going to fail, and I think that's why there wasn't anything planned for it. But when you look at how it's selling, especially in Japan, where people are still lining up outside of stores, I mean, maybe it's coming. Yeah, oh, I mean, it's I, coming. I mean, eventually, the yeah. The dragons thing, are coming. The the <laughs> it's not it's not quite as big of a failure as the Wii U, and yeah, it has been moving units. But the thing is, is that they do need title support. They do. Like they do. If they, it, it, you know, that's the thing is that Nintendo has this big history of doing one of these where you know they'll put out something that's really hot like the Wii and then it'll go and it but when it valleys it valleys out for an entire fucking generation and now they've got a lot of hype with you know the switch and being able to make it portable but people when people buy it they find out two things a there's nothing to play and b the battery can't last longer than two hours and those are the two. Those are the two biggest factors. If you're playing, if you're playing a a Switch if you're game, Breath of the Wild, yeah, it doesn't last yeah, very long. Yeah, exactly. If you're playing th- something like Breath of the Wild, it lasts for two fucking hours. Yeah, and even though there are actually some good games, like like look, I was blown away, and this is a new story that's going to come up, but we're just going to go to it because it makes sense. Uh, the fact that they're coming out with Wolfenstein Two and Doom for the Switch that surprised the hell out of me. But like Breath of the Wild. You're right. The battery life isn't going to last very long playing those games. No, it's not. So even if you do get really good games like AAA titles and stuff on the Switch, then you're going to run into battery issues. I mean, I and, still mostly play my Switch connected to my television. It's only those like rare I mean, times where I'm like, true, okay, but... I'm going to go on a car ride. And how often does my car ride longer than two hours? Not, so what? So. so what makes? So what? What makes the Switch different from like a PlayStation Four then? Right. So now you're purposely playing on underpowered hardware. And porting that to your TV, you're you're taking a core functionality and a core selling point of the system out of the equation. But the thing is, is that you're doing that for yourself. Not everyone is going to have the same consumptive patterns that you do, well, right? And and so the the reasons to buy or keep investing in a system are different. People, a system can do very well on release, and then as there are no, there's no software support for it, start to die out. We saw that with the Vita. I mean, the Vita got trounced out of the gate by the 3DS, but it it was that fundamental lack of software support that saw it never be able to gain a foothold. And if Nintendo does the same thing, you're going to have a bunch of people with a bunch of dusty switch systems like you had a bunch of people who had a bunch of dusty Wii systems and then your potential pool of who you're selling systems to is much smaller because there are people who may own the system but they're not personally invested in it they couldn't give a shit about about you know oh another uh, uh, you know like i'll dust it off when a new smash title comes out but they're not playing it with regularity they're not playing it every day they're not that's not where they're spending their time they're still spending the most time with a PUBG or with you know um uh you know something on plate you know fucking, destiny 2 something yeah exactly exactly you look at the time spent difference there's a huge time disparity between where people you know between what the switch gets and and everything else and there's gonna come a time where people will just be like fuck it i don't give a shit anymore 
Combating toxic Overwatch players is taken away from dev time, according to game director Jeff Kaplan. To uh, toxic behavior in the game has been growing steadily worse in the game over the last few months, and combating it has begun to pull away from other areas of development. It's common growing pain that games like League of Legends and Counter-Strike have had to face before it. But it's still a bummer to hear about. <sighs> It's not surprising. No, yeah, it's not. It's, it's, it's super surprising. Here's It's easy. All right. If you get more than, like, I don't know, random number, 100 negative reports, you get banned for, like, five days, and you just throw that account in with, like, a, like a giant pool of, like, to, like, actually, like, look over the accounts. And then if you're a shitty person who used racial slurs all the time, PewDiePie, then you get fucking booted out forever. Okay, but then that's... then you pay 40 bucks again. That's the, the game. Pr that's the problem, though, Chris, is... To do all of that, that takes manpower. That takes money. It because takes it, one time. You, you make it, you do it, and then after you like the big swath of people, open the floodgates, and then after that, it's just a trickle because people how, are – No, because like you just said, they spend another $40 to get back into the game again. How and is it how that – How are people going to do that though? Uh, uh, the the reason people bit. are so toxic in Overwatch is because they see that – they have no repercussions. That is that is fundamentally not true. The number of screenshots that I see in the shit posting group, group that I'm in that shows like how they've been banned from competitive for like two years, or people complaining that you know they've had like a thousand infractions and they can't play anymore, so they have to buy a new account is very, very frequent. Yes, that's the reason why why they why they're losing development time on this is because yes, they actually are doing stuff. They're actually instead of just being like, all right, you know, throw people in there and you know use the reporting system, they're actually developing or trying to develop better reporting systems. I mean, I think that console might have actually just finally got its first type of reporting system. So yeah, they are actually actively trying to deal with it and in more ways than just banning people in SWATs, they're trying to implement systems that help with getting that done, but people just keep coming back. Well, I mean, when it's a hugely popular game, when it's also very competitive and people's emotions are at play, they're going to do dumb shit. There's always going to be dumb shit that happens. Uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, this is Blizzard Activision that we're talking about. This is the largest game development company pretty much on the fucking planet, right? They have more money than God. There <laughs> they're, is building, no they're building a fucking stadium for their esports. They've game. already built it. It's opening in October. <laughs> There's That's no... Cool. How do you not... How do you not have a separate staff? How do you not have a completely separate staff that deals with community complaints? Why would this take away from dev time unless you're taking devs and making devs double as your community uh, the, your community team. Sa same thing I was just telling Chris. The reason why is because they're actually, instead of just worrying about how are we dealing with the people doing the infractions, they're actually trying to make their systems for like reporting better. And since that stuff is actually in game, yeah, the developers have to develop that. So it's not just about dealing with people, but you're talking the systems to deal with people. You're talking about like a form submission that takes very, very little time to program. They already have a, a form submission tool. I, I'm just saying, like, like the the reporting mechanisms on their face are very, very easy to program. Maybe data analysis might take up some time, but again, you need to have a separate department and separate developers that are worrying about the community and the way that the community is developing. Hey, that's fair. Having different developers for those types of systems as yeah. opposed to maps or balance changes or new characters, that I agree with. And again, this is Blizzard, and they have they have all of the resources. They there. I I do not accept. Oh well, it would be too. It's too cost intensive for us to be able to do that. No, that is a community management. That yes, they're penny pinching. That's a community management issue, and there's no reason. Like like if that if that was their excuse, I would say don't ever buy another fucking loot box from them ever again. Stop in, engaging in all of their microtransactions because that's fucking bullshit. You give them so much money, so much money through fucking loot boxes. Loot boxes are digital gambling. They make so much money off that shit. That's why they've injected it into so many fucking games now. Yep. And there's and there's no overhead. It's fucking it's you're you're paying for RNG. 
And because we're used to like card packs and shit and getting like a super rare out of card pack and the, and the endorphins that that kind of shit produces, <laughs> oh, we're yeah. more, way more susceptible and, and to the cardboard it. smell. Ooh. We're way more susceptible to it from a psychological standpoint, but you can reject it. Like you can say, well, okay, if you're not going to bother spending the money that I'm giving you on loot boxes or microtransed items or monthly subscriptions, if you're not going to use that money to be able to admin your community in the way that it needs to be admined and it doesn't end up putting additional development strain on people like Jeff Kaplan, people who are actually involved with the nuts and bolts bolts of this fucking game. I wouldn't accept that. You know I'm, not what, a, I'm not a Blizzard player. I'm not a Blizzard fan. So I, I feel like I have no, I have no dog in this fight, uh -huh. but I feel like if I was, I would be looking very, very, very hard at where my money was going inside of that company. Well, and thinking about it just now too, I don't even know why they felt the need to have came out and said this because recently on a checkpoint uh, episode, I actually said that it seems like that they're doing way more than they than 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 they've done. I mean, they just came out with a new uh, uh, map for Junker Town. They just came out with the uh, the new deathmatch mode uh, along with the you know the new map that came along with that. Like it seems like they're pushing out content quicker than they ever have before so i wonder who you know so this is felt, so this is bullshit yeah, well, i wonder why they felt the need to go sorry guys that that you know combating toxic community is slowing us down because i don't know that they that i feel like they're slowing so down. then it's I think bullshit. Just figured, i think you just figured it out right there Kahlo. maybe they aren't having to do that but what's happening is they're saying like hey guys you're all being real shitty and it's making us develop less maybe you should be less shitty i see that's what i should stop shitting though yeah, that I don't. Yeah, I don't think that that helps. I don't think that that does anything to your case, and it just makes you. It makes you look like you're trying to play the victim in this situation, and you shouldn't be. You you make you make a bajillion fucking dollars every month. And like do do not do not sit here and give me that fucking garbage. No, and no one who is part of the problem is gonna look at that and go, oh, I should stop being. I should stop being so toxic then. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. I remember there was a Blizzard forum post where the guy's like complaining, hey, I got banned for no reason. And Jeff Kaplan comes in there and says, oh, really? Well, the account on this has over 1,000 reports of uh, offensive chat. 1,000 reports. So if if he got reported five times for every team that he was on, that would be over 200 matches that he got reported on. Right. And you're saying that that's we still need to find a little bit more, a little bit more uh, in-depth like you, you have to take 200 matches of if offensive chat before you get fucking banned in this game. That's ridiculous. Well, I mean, like, I don't know, like if you, if we want to go back to the, um, you know, the, the Eve online thing, you know, like you had a bunch of people reporting one guy for, you know, what sounds like a bullshit threat and got his account banned. So, you know, like okay, there's so a whole bunch of threat then come on. The, oh, come on. That's, that's nonsense. That's like someone, dude, like, you know, like that's like someone being like, oh, you said retard. I'm going to get you in trouble. Okay. Well, who are you going to get me in trouble with? Like it's, you know, if you have a, a, a governing body that you can report things to having an on like, like a massive, reporting swath doesn't necessarily mean anything should they investigate it by all means but the truth should will out but my point is is that you should hire enough people to be able to do that and they shouldn't be your developers there's no way that how toxic or not a community is should affect the development of that title and it's disingenuous to imply that it would Creative director Randy Varnell has announced that the upcoming fall update for Battleborn will be its last. Included in the update are the last round skins, which happen to be Borderlands based and some balance changes. This comes just three months after the game went free to play. Varnell did say that the servers will remain up for the foreseeable future. A uh, side note, apparently the uh, 2018 is not foreseeable. So look forward to the servers going down <laughs> next year. Yeah, did 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 this game ever stand a chance? Uh, no. 
pretty much not. Like, this is the one that released alongside uh, Overwatch, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And, and the weekend that Battleborn went free to play was the one and only weekend that Blizzard ever had a double XP event. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wow. Rubbing salt in the wounds. Yeah. Holy hell! Yep. Like, like was... there's no, you can't tell me that that was not intentional. Oh, absolutely. If they, if they had had just one other double XP event, and literally anywhere, I'd have been like, all right, maybe, but no, hundred percent intentional. That's so brutal. Rip oh. Battleborn. Yeah, I'd like to say I feel bad for Battleborn, but I guess I really don't. I don't care. No. <laughs> Does it matter? No, it it's it's. That game was garbage, and it deserved to fail. And you know why it was garbage? Because it was literally an FPS MOBA. Like, this is... You want to call Overwatch a MOBA? No. Battleborn is the FPS MOBA. Uh, I mean, Overwatch has some, you know, likenesses to MOBA. No. 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 It's (laughs) MOBA-esque. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, it's MOBA-esque. It's a roguelike MOBA-esque Firefly-esque game. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> they should add card game elements. Stop. <laughs> okay, no more. No, no. Yes. No. Chris, yes. We're, we're merely trying to prepare you for what your daughter's going to put you through at some point in your life. That, that doesn't even make sense. She's going to torture you. She doesn't even know what MOBA means. <laughs> oh, Not please yet, let her but be a she big will. MOBA fan. She please. will. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all for the video game news. For more on the latest video game news, head over to CheckpointRadio.com and subscribe to the Checkpoint podcast feed. I want to know I want to know what different game types could uh, evolve in the next, you know, like 15 years so that when little Bert Bert does start playing video games, what type of video game she could play to most disappoint. Well, first of all, she's going to be doing mobile gaming in six years. Like, oh, yeah. By, yeah. Like, like statistically speaking, by in six years, she'll be a mobile gamer. And, and I, I guarantee you uh, right, more like four years <laughs> that. Fair that enough. as as Uncle Robbie, I'm going to be pushing her towards all of the games that I know that Chris will hate. Like what? Like like uh, whatever the Skylanders or Disney Infinity of that time. There you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, you should also get her into her first MMO, Hello Kitty's Island Adventure. Yeah, is that still around? Is that still I don't. Running? I have no idea. But oh my god. I, I saw it, it at Best Buy once, and I've never. I just. I couldn't get over it. I it's an it, actual game. I yes. Hope, yeah. It's I an MMO. It was a punchline. It is, an, it, was it, no, it is absolutely an MMO called it Hello is. Kitty's Island Adventure. I saw it at Best Buy. I held it in my hands. It was a thing. Of Holy no. shit! We need I, to play this game, and we need to do like a side by side comparison versus Final Fantasy. 14. Oh my god! We actually do need to do that. Also, I am, will be so happy if it is still a game because that means it will have outlasted Battleborn, and that's exta- outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think I th- I think I know the game that would upset him the most if his if his daughter started playing it. Really? Yeah, I what do. Is it? What? What, what is Final, it? Here? Final Fantasy Eleven. <laughs> Why would that upset? I th- I think he'd be proud almost. No, I feel like... no. Don't you just be like, let me educate you. Because you would, you would know you. She would never know the trials that I went through <laughs> playing that game. Yeah. It would be it would be like watching her date the biggest loser possible because you know that that's just not going to go anywhere oh please. and where it she does would never go, date robbie and and where it does go is not not gonna be fun not fun for anybody involved uh infinity fox club penguin ended but they made a club penguin too they did <laughs> they i think did? so really I yeah i think the reason they ended it was because they had made like a better one or something I thought they just couldn't. They just, what, uh. A citation needed there, right. Robo. What, what if she See, gets into Yokai Watch instead of Pokemon? <gasps> That'd be so good. You know, he actually likes Yokai no, Watch. I want to get yes. into Yokai Watch. Po- Poochie, Poochie in the chat uh, is being a perfect example. FF11 is alive and well, and they released new content and trust this week. You know what? They did. It's more than what they can say about 14, bro. And this is not the wrong, this is the wrong show for this. Yeah, well, maybe we'll have this discussion. In, uh, like <laughs> I like how, how Strife said that uh, he got, his friend got banned in Hello Kitty Island Adventure for just spamming I like pie over and over again in general chat. Okay, well, don't spam for anything. It. It's like, I like, but, like, I like, but I'm surprised because or... don't like little kids just post random things. I feel like it's we a little a kid's MMO. You think that, are they just going to ban any single kid that's i don't know 
Well, I assume they're pressing enter space up, enter space up, enter space up, but like you know, like spamming the yeah, same yeah. thing eight hundred well, times I mean, in the chat. Yeah, like, that's true. That's gonna get you banned no matter what you say. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, that's just gonna take away from the dev time of the game if they, if they <laughs> keep getting banned. So weren't weren't speed weren't people speed running like how quickly they could get banned yes. in that? Yeah, yeah, yes. they sure yeah. Were. yeah, that was Club Penguin Island, and or no, yeah, that was Club Penguin, and then apparently to replace that, they released a mobile version. Called, uh, Club Penguin Island. It oh released the, on the mobile devices the day the servers were shut down for the other one. I don't know why I've never heard that. I just remember it was like a big deal when Club Penguin went down. And yeah, we talked about the speed running uh, bands on our show. I mean, I, yeah, I remember that, but I don't remember them then releasing another one the very next day. You know, your game's made it when you get a shout out from FEC when you go <laughs> when your servers go offline. Oh, okay, there you go. Jim Link got it. We're gonna we're gonna get a little Bert Bert to play FF15, a new empire. Oh, What's that? No. Is that the mobile one? That's it's the mobile, mobile one. castle defense game. Where you actually do get to build stuff, apparently, according to that one guy that called it. It is, actually but... pays. And Pokemon Go. We'll get her into that. I don't know, man. I received way too many Farmville invites from this motherfucker to think <laughs> that, like, he would actually have a problem with that shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. We could probably think of a worse game that I would be disappointed in. Like what? I don't know. Definitely not Bubsy. That's a good game. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Comment on checkpoint, by the way. <laughs> I did. I, I listened. Yeah, I, sure I listened. There I was, was no way I could. Yeah, I was disappointed with your reaction. It was very. You know what? We had a good. lot of comments. Only a ten, se- a ten minute segment to do that, and it's real hard <laughs> yeah. to get bogged down on one for very long. And plus, a lot of them were real sad, and we were all like kind of depressed. Yeah, people like took it like really took it to heart. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I think I would be disappointed if she got into Suikoden. That would be really <laughs> why. <laughs> Because you knew that she would then get her heart crushed when there was no Suikoden in six. I know. No, because I would just be like, "Oh, you could play so many better, better games." Uh, have you played Suikoden? Like Vandal Hearts. Vandal have you Hearts. Have you ever played a Suikoden, Jexta, Chris? No, no, he hasn't. So, what the fuck are you talking about? Nika, stop engaging. <laughs> okay. Don't don't, don't okay. feed the troll. Don't feed that troll. Okay. I can't. No, I can't. No. There's yeah. no logic when arguing with Chris ever. So, so why do you do it? Yeah, has there why ever do any been? of us? Why do you? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> like Callie and Nika always get caught in it, <laughs> and Nate's always just like, "God damn it!" <laughs> and, and you know, it's it's like when uh, it's a lot like when Nate will agree with something just so he can start making his point. Yeah. I hear I hear him talk, and I have to immediately respond to it before I like I'm five words in before I'm like, "No, stop, no." Oh. Too late. He he sent me messages for 20 minutes after I stopped talking to him the other night because I was going to bed about the Defenders show. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he kept on saying, okay, I'm going to bed. He kept on talking, going to bed. <laughs> I get that for like 20, 30 minutes. I was just seeing how long I could keep him on, for to be honest. <laughs> but, but, but yes, Defenders is a really, really bad show. <laughs> is it really bad? I heard it was okay. It was, it was okay. really bad. It's yeah. like it's like middle of the road. Um, it's not so- better than Iron Fist, who is, oh, by the no. way, Danny Rand, by the way, is the immortal Iron Fist, protector of Kunlung, and he will destroy the hand, if you guys didn't know. True, true story. Can we, can, Nate, Nate, can you mute him from your side? You I'm that? not going to. He, he, he. Oh. <laughs> I can, but I won't. <laughs> All right, well, we were going to get on to a nice discussion about video game crossovers today, but it's already really late. Yeah. What, we how did that want, happen? Do we want to we, save that for next week? Yeah, we can we can save video game crossovers for okay. next week. I, I I feel like we can let the last like uh, ten minutes play out uh, bagging on PewDiePie. That's fine. We can do that. Cause he d- he almost did it again. Oh my god! Did yeah? Did you guys see? It? I didn't actually watch it. No. Oh, you should. It's hilarious. Like he gets half out. He's like, mm, nope. Nope. <laughs> nope, shouldn't do that. Ooh, Probably don't want to double down on that particular word. Yeah, he's like, just apologize for that. Two days, almost blew it. Ooh, do do better, Felix. Be better, Felix. Like, he just <laughs> did he talking. say that? He actually yes, says- he just like starts talking to himself. Oh, wow, that's God. actually that's, funny. It's dude, really sad when you need a mantra to not use that word on air. Like, right? That's uh, wow. I mean, but like, also apparently he's actually he he's he started using a different word in place of it. That doesn't help. No, that doesn't. Well, that's I just mean, that's it, just dog whistle. It depends on what the word is. If it's something like jerk nugget, it's fine probably. But if but it if means the same right, thing, but if it, it yeah, matter? It's double G with double B, and that's the word he uses. Oh no. That's, no, that's awful. That's, that's not okay. Not okay. Holy I, crap! I, How I hard just, is this? It, this is this is so stupid because I feel like he's 
uh, he's I feel like he's doing it on purpose. Um, I mean, well, first yeah, of all, I feel, I feel like I, on it. Yeah. Like, uh, like people like, are all like, look, the more he does this, people will stop watching him. Guess what? No, they're not. No. People are just going to start <laughs> hate watching. Especially him. now that we know that he's like can slip up because he almost did it again. People yeah. are going to watch him to see when he fucks up again. There, he has so much attention on him that even if he decided to go like completely heal and just be like the worst possible douchebag ever, people are still going to watch him. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I hate it. I hate that that's what our society has gotten to. Although he's like the Trump of gaming. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, that gives him yeah, weird, too much, that gives weirdly too much, too much credit. Uh, yeah, uh, well, we're talking about Trump, right? How like, about um, the uh, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch McConnell? I, I, stop! Right. Tr- fuck off! The, uh, I, the the gay frogs on the moon guy. Who's that? Oh, oh, Alex Jones. Yeah. Could he be the Alex Jones of gaming? No, because he's not putting an opinion out there. Yeah. A racist one. Just saying no, a it's not. It's say. not even. It's not. No, don't. Stop. He's not give, asserting stop, an opinion. Right? Stop. Don't give him the fucking credit of putting an idea out there. He said a word. He said a yeah, he word. He didn't have an idea about the word. It wasn't, or an idea yeah. About no, it he's not. literally just, that's fair. He, he he's used not a slur. A, he's not espousing anything. He just used a word that is filled with a lot of fucking hurt and hatred. And I defend a lot of fucking words. I'll defend any, you know, like I'll defend any statement almost given the context, right? Like, mm-hmm. like I will go out of my way to defend humor and jokes because there's context and there's a point there. And I don't believe that every joke that talks about race makes it intrinsically racist. Yeah. And we have to have difficult dialogues about difficult subjects in order to get to the other side of them. And that includes comedy. And I feel like comedy has been a long-standing and valid way for people to work out very complicated issues like race. But if you can't have the conversation, if you're not allowed to have the conversation, that can never even fucking happen. So that's why I will go to such lengths to defend people's right to use any word, any word that they so choose, okay? But here's the problem that I have with PewDiePie. That when he was trying to make a joke and when he was trying to make a point, yes, I would absolutely defend that. But as we had pointed out on Checkpoint, this is a moment of frustration where he's just saying he's saying the first frustrated thing that comes to his fucking head. Okay, and I even admitted my own weakness on that show. I'll, there are there are times when I get really frustrated, and I'll it, especially if no one's watching, I'll be like, "Ah, fucking faggot!" It's a it's a bad and deeply ingrained thing in me that when I use it, I feel bad, right? Like if I say "faggot" as a part of a joke, or if I say the word "nigger" as a part of a joke, I don't feel bad or responsible about those things. I don't have that that uh, you know some people call it white guilt or liberal guilt that's built in with that. I don't shy away from any specific words, okay? But there is a context that makes that shit important. And when I use something in a fucked up context, in a moment of weakness, I have that self-reflection and I go, fuck, that was a fucked up thing to say. Even if I'm alone, even if I'm alone and no one heard me, I live alone. I could say fucked up shit every day. I could call my cat a faggot every moment of every day. No one would care. It wouldn't hurt anyone. It wouldn't hurt the cat. But I, but I don't do that mostly because I'm not a fucking asshole, but that, but if you do, that shit has a way of working its way into your head and ingraining itself in, and it'll come out in weird ways. Like when you're streaming and you get your ass handed to you on fucking PUBG. Which happens a lot. Right. So why would I want to reinforce that neuron pathway that says that's an acceptable thing to say when you're frustrated or in any situation? Right? That's a fucked up thing. That's and and the people who are just going, ah, well, it's PewDiePie. It does it, you know, he just does dumb shit. Like, no, don't let him off the fucking hook like that. Yep. There, if nothing, if nothing else, this guy should have a moment of self-reflection. Beyond just be better, Felix, be better. 
that goes, why the fuck is that the thing that I say when I'm frustrated? People are people are worried about your cat, so let's point out, we call him an <laughs> asshole. That's what we call your cat. On a pretty regular basis, to be fair. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think at the end of the day, when you look at someone like Pews at this point, you just gotta be like, why am I watching this? You're an asshole. You don't care. I don't believe you for a second when you say things like, you know, be better, Felix. Like, okay, at that point, no. you're making a bit out of it. Yeah. Go to hell. I mean, again, like, it's... Man, I you know, I don't know if that means that you hold hate in your heart for another race. I don't know. But I do know that in terms of 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 shit that you want to project to other people that's not a good thing to 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 project outwards man that's not and it's it's just it's not it's not a good look like it's that's not a thing especially right now dude like with how charged everything is and how serious shit is around around specifically you know stuff like that like dude why would you why would you go back and touch that third rail again yeah, why? Yeah, why double down on it? No, because it doesn't. And, it doesn't affect him at all. Don't hang on. That's not true. Remember, the first time that this happened, Disney walked. YouTube walked. He's a still lot. so well off, though. Hmm. Like, so yeah, losing you big sponsorships like that is a big fucking deal. It right, is. But at the same time, yeah, he's still like, going. And he, Robbie, all he's got is his audience. That's it. He's got his audience and it does it, does it hurt him with his own audi- audience? No. I mean, it's the same thing like T Martin, right? That guy, that, that fucking streamer who is running the uh, CS go uh, betting site, the skin yeah, betting site, right. Mm-hmm. right? He's still, dude, he's still around. He still makes streams and, and Twitch. You know, he's, I think he's still on Twitch. I think he's still on YouTube. I think he, uh, he actually finally resolved the whole lawsuit that was going down too. I think that's, yeah, I, I, he did. And I mean, he was investigated by the FTC, Yep. Um, but it hasn't really affected his ability to reach his audience. Yeah, they let him off pretty much a slap on the wrist. I mean, he had to shut down the website, obviously, but right. But and the reason, and the reason why, the reason why is that there was no precedence for this. There was no pre-standing precedence for something like game skin betting. That's why. That's it. You got it. <laughs> so, you know, like that's and that's you know that's something that we've all got to kind of realize and be responsible for as broadcasters is that you know look when you get an audience watching you it's kind of you know you can push your audience and you can push them away you can push sponsors away a whole lot easier but you know like to really sever that is uh you know you you've really got to take it to a place where you know fuck it i i don't even know what that is i don't i don't i don't know but I mean, like, you know, does this negatively impact PewDiePie long term? Probably, probably. And that's um, when, when Robbie talks about him in the short. It's a short term thing where people are tuning in now. In in six months, no one's going to be caring. Oh no, man! Fifty seven million subscribers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, how does that just disappear? Even even over six months or a year. Well, I, yeah, I especially because he has a lot of like children that watch him, and I think don't quite understand the gravity of what's going no, on. No, and either. and when they see those headlines, and then he just keeps on doing it. That's how you get, you know, the kids like that. That kid the kids who think that they can do it too. Yeah, not yeah. a big deal. PewDiePie gets away with it. Mm, it's a fact. We had a call like that. Yeah, last week. Yeah. I wish we could take calls on this because I'd love to I'd love to take calls, even though we're, you know, we're kind of out of, you know, out of time. But, you know, here and 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 uh, actually, you know, fucking uh, uh, Piggy actually brings up a pretty, pretty valid point. You know, like I I own the shitty words that I choose to use. And and again, you know, somebody wants to take this conversation out of context. Did I use shitty words? Of course I do. You know, like everyone does. And I, but that doesn't excuse it. Right. Like that doesn't make it OK. Mm-hmm. It's not something that I think you guys as an audience like you don't expect me to to, you know, like you expect me to 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 fucking, you know, go off or be salty about stuff or rant about things. But it's not like, you know, like you come and I down a boss on something and I'm like, yeah, take that, you faggot. Like, no, like that's not it's not a part of my brand. And the thing about PewDiePie is, is that he's almost rolling it in as a part of his brand. Yes, that exactly. Makes me, yeah. exactly. That, like that makes me very uncomfortable because there is this like there is this sort of like 
vein of 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 fucking 4chan shittiness that you can tap out there in people and they will latch onto it and yeah you'll you know you'll be able to carve out the same you know um uh financial stakes as like an alex jones and that can do very well for you but i i that is a I would never attach any of my brands to something like that. I would never think that that would be something that I want to project or, or have people associate me with. It is, it is fucking scummy. And especially right now, like, you know, again, I, 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 it it puts me in a tough position because I, I want to, I, I, I very reflexively want to defend free speech because it's something that I very strongly believe in. But at the same time, I don't think that fucking torch bearing marches of Nazis is okay in a place like Charlottesville. And it's something that I would very personally work, work to, to stop. But does the law play a role in that? Should the law play a role in stopping that? No, people should. I should, you should. We as individuals should. Should the cops come and shut something like that down? No. Should uh, someone like YouTube come and shut someone like PewDiePie down? No. But we intrinsically, guys, we vote with our fucking feet, right? Like we are the ones who decide where money is spent. And there is a certain amount of, of tangible value that comes with viewership that comes when you watch somebody's video and then you engage with them and you come back again and again and again. Well, see, so then the problem there doesn't lie entirely with him because there is a section of people that look at that and think, yeah, this is my dude. I mean, look at, look at all the people that went in and bombed out the, uh, the steam reviews for firewatch because they're on PewDie's side. I know, I, I know. And there are plenty of people who would verily, uh, you know, very proudly rock a Kekistan flag. But it, you know, it's like when you, I, I don't know if, if, if just people have no context for exactly what type of shit heel person that is that you would be associating yourself with. But I, I, I have a feeling that, I don't know, maybe, maybe not enough people have actually met a white supremacist in person and have seen the amount of hate and vitriol that comes out and comes from fucking nowhere or paranoid sources. And that, that, you know, like you just go, Oh, that, that shit's fucking off the rails. Like that's the craziest shit ever. When you hear it, it does, it puts you off kilter. You're like, what? What? You, yeah, is this a bit? Is this a joke? What the hell is that? I, I look, I'm I'm proud to associate my myself with you know uh, uh, critical thinkers and 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 free thinkers and people who you know don't flinch from a difficult conversation, but fundamentally they want to have that conversation because they understand that that's a subject that we need to try to try to have a discussion about to try to resolve there's like uh, none of the at least none of the people that i respect have been doing that to try to push a personal agenda of like i don't like this type of person and they need to be eradicated you know what i mean like the, the the conversation is the important thing and it needs to be had suppressing the conversation doesn't do anything and 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 aligning yourself with the shittiest part of that conversation doesn't do anything. And I feel like he's doing it mostly defensively, right? Like he's like, ah, I don't want people to think I'm an asshole, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it funny. Well, no, I mean, like, first of all, he put out an apology video, which you know, fucking suck my dick. Take your apology video and cram it up your fucking ass. If it, if you really meant it, you wouldn't have almost used the word again. And, you know, like, clearly, that's just what he does. He does shit and then makes apology videos for it. So he can try to bank in off all of the, the hits that the initial thing did and the apology does. Yeah, yeah. We've seen this shit before. Yeah. We've seen stop, this shit before. Stop giving him the views, guys. I, I just, I, yeah, I, I think that's really it is, is, you know, if people stopped accepting this and if people went like this is just not this is not something that i even want to watch or engage with anymore and moved on that you know we 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 could talk about someone else that was you know more responsible or at least funny right like i would love to be able to talk about someone who said something controversial and it was at least fucking funny yeah 
That is a lot more fun for us. It's right. it's I I, yeah, the whole thing the whole thing is just fucking upsetting because he throws he ends up throwing dirt on gaming media with with this whole thing or like the idea of organic gaming media yeah or the idea or the idea that a show like this or that a personality a, a personality like ours isn't some sort of loose cannon or th you know like um uh threat to your bottom line like I, how how quickly do you think Disney is going to be anxious to do business with another Twitch streamer? Uh, it's gonna be oh, you know, that's <laughs> probably a really, really good point. I mean, honestly, like how, how many more, how many more big companies get burned by this shit and stop doing business with people like us before, before you know like what it does because obviously you know D disney uh recently made that uh that that, that big deal and they have a future in like you know esports and stuff like that but at this yeah. point now going into it you're right they're not going to want to reach out to well -established, think established people already yeah. they're going to want to start bringing their personalities from the ground up so they have total control over it. where do you think they're going to source their content where do you think they're going to source their content they're going to look inside the people that they've already hired at you know wherever yeah. inside of disney that have a passion about this and those are the people who are going to get first crack at it people yeah people they, they, people they don't know yep. they can trust but feel much more confident they can trust exactly and i mean like again you know people are you know people have pointed out that we're way less cavalier on checkpoint and obviously that does have something to do with the fcc but i think you know we also feel a responsibility being the first syndicated radio show about video games to do it right yeah we can't have people who aren't big or who are newer to the gaming industry come out like, well, these guys are just assholes. Is this what the gaming industry is like? There is an element of we're extending the olive branch to people who may not know about esports. Right. Right. Especially using a transmission method like radio, right. you're going to hit a wide net of people. And it's just as likely that they may already be interested in gaming. And that's cool. Like that's kind of, you know, something that we're banking on. But at the same time, though, you know, like I it's it's just it's not a good look overall to have gaming media folks out there doing shit like this. And and yeah, I think it does. I think it makes organizations big long-standing media organizations much much more reluctant to um you know source people who have had their rise through twitch and stuff like that i i i, I would i mean shit i never the, even yeah i never even considered that angle it's before. the same it's the same industry that i work in and i will tell you that once somebody has like once a, a concentrated group of people has an opinion about something like it's very 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 difficult to change that Right. It's very difficult to have somebody start thinking about that differently. And again, you know, I think that's why I think that's why we worked as hard at Checkpoint when we, you know, when we decided to do it is a because the esports thing is taking off so much and B, because all of these dumbasses who are out here on YouTube and Twitch that are doing shit like drama alert mm -hmm. to get views are making that vehicle as a as a potential career method really unstable yeah it's well i mean because uh, if, if you think about uh, uh radio in general and you can obviously attest to this that that a having a career in uh traditional radio is very much like a legacy thing right like there are still some people that are a lot of people in it have been there for a long long time and yep. those are the people that we have to convince like gaming's the future right and right. if someone's trying to pitch us to them and the only thing they've heard they be like you know when they're talking about streaming oh you mean like that that PewDiePie, like that PewDiePie guy, guy. That, that was in the headlines and that's the only basis they have for it. They're going to go, no, we don't want anything to do with that. Exactly. Yep. And that, and that becomes, yeah, that becomes a big problem for a show like ours. And again, you know, we've, we've, we've taken, you know, a, a lot of steps to be able to establish our credibility. We've got 32 stations that are airing the show right now and even more that are growing. Um, shout out to Riverside San Bernardino. That's one of our latest additions. So right outside the LA area. Um, so, you know, like we've been working very hard to be able to create a, 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 you know, create a secondary opportunity outside of what we're able to do here at Twitch and YouTube. And yeah, I, I, I do worry. I, I worry a lot about the, you know, future viability of doing an entire show on YouTube and Twitch because inevitably and eventually 
these big media organizations are going to step in and want to be competitive at that. And when they do, all of your opportunities will cease. Every opportunity that you have on Twitch will cease. I mean, you, you'll be able to grow a fan base and a following, but it, it's, that's going to take as much work as something like establishing a fan base or a following on social media. It's going to take that kind of effort to try to attract people because when they come to the platform, they're going to be met with broadcast standard content. That's eventually where it's going to go. In many ways, you're racing the clock. Yes. And, it, and, and, it's, all, and it's been ticking since before any of us were thinking about this. It's been ticking really since basically the first podcast that mattered happened, the first decently sized podcast. WTF with Mark, uh, WTF pod, I would say it would be yeah, one of the first. Pretty yeah. close. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So fuck off, PewDiePie. Yeah. Bottom line. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Fuck you. Peace the fuck You're ruining out. it for everybody. Peace. Yeah. All right, that's going to be it for uh, final encounter cast for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate uh, we appreciate hearing from all of you. Um, and uh, again, join us next Sunday, uh, one p.m. here at twitch.tv slash Limit Break Radio. We should have the full studio uh, back in in service. Hopefully, knock on wood. Hopefully, um, but I will I will try to do my best. I, I will be honest. Since the power problem. I've not been very active on social media. I have, I've, I've been, I've been pretty depressed as fr it's frustrating and depressing to be in a uh, you know, in a place full of equipment that none of it can be used. Um, so I have not been very active on social media, but I will do better to be able to give you a, you know, some reports on, on what's going on, you know, with the studio. So um, I'll let you guys know, what the status is you can follow us at uh fec podcast and uh final encounter cast um and uh i'll also send those out through limit break radio and checkpoint as well so um all right guys that's gonna be it for today thank you guys so much for uh hanging out we really really appreciate uh having you along again 1 p.m twitch.tv slash limit break radio is where you can catch the show live we'd love to hear from you uh, take your calls, but uh, obviously with uh, having less uh, hardware available and and not the studio, that's it's a little bit difficult. So um, uh, yeah, finalencountercast.com is where you can go and check out our uh, full archive of 79 episodes. That's pretty cool, right? 79 episodes, including today's, all, can all be found over at finalencountercast.com. It's going to be it. Thank you guys for uh, hanging out. I want to thank my crew Robbie, Chris, Callie, Nika. I'm Nate. Have a good one. Final Encountercast is a production of FinalEncounterCast.com, Limit Break Radio, and Bender Media Productions. Today's episode was produced by Nate Bender, Callie Sloan, and Kooky Persona. This show is made possible by the generous Patreon donors of the podcast, Limit Break Radio. Opening music provided by Keyboard Kid. More info and music can be found at KeyboardKid206.Bandcamp.com. Closing music provided by Sobzy. For more info, visit Sobzy.Bandcamp.com. Final Encountercast and its hosts are solely responsible for its content. There we go. Nice.